overhead, Bristol International Raceway looks pretty serene. Trust me on this one. Looks are a little deceiving. Stand by for the action. is not what these folks have come here looking for. They came to Bristol for a celebration of speed and it is about to get underway ladies and gentlemen. Hello and welcome to Bristol International. Dave Despain NASCAR Today special pre-race edition and look who I found right out of the box to kick off the show. Talk about excitement. We got it right here. Going for the 8th championship. Dale Earnhardt. I want to ask you about this qualifying deal. Last year you set a record here by winning the race from 24th spot. So this year you come back and qualify 25th, so you can set another record. Did you do that on purpose? Uh, well, uh, hopefully I did, but I didn't do it on purpose, no. But hopefully we will win from there. But, you know, Bristol's a tight racetrack. It's really fast, and the just tenths make a difference, hundreds make a difference in qualifying. But once the race gets going, it seems like everybody's running the same pace. Uh, a few of the cars will be really fast at the start. But we hope to mid-race mid and, and beyond we'll be in the contention for things. We can try to get up through the field and catch some, the cautions right and get some pit stops right, we'll be okay. Talked to Childress yesterday, and he said, you know, ten, we were talking about Darlington. He said 10 years ago, Earnhardt would have been up there in the middle of all those wrecks. But now he's matured, and he stays out of trouble, and that's why we're so consistent. One, do you buy that? And two, how important is that going to be here today to stay out of trouble? It's going to be important that I hadn't used up all my luck so far this year. It's going to need some luck today. And uh, really, it's going to be that's going to be the job at hand to start with is to be out of trouble and uh, watch what's going on. And it is a tight racetrack. It's a competitive racetrack. Look at all these race fans sitting right here watching for this show to start. It's, it's really going to be exciting. So we just got to watch it and take it easy and uh, try to be there at the end. That's the program. Be uh, be around at the end. You could win a race. All right, man. I only got to work a half hour today. You got a long day, so you better go to work, half right? Half an hour? Yeah, I'm off at 1 o'clock. you were live all day. No, man. I'm, I'm punching out at 1 o'clock. Easy little 500 lapper. We'll be okay. Okay, go get him. That's Dale Earnhardt going for the eighth win. Eighth wins here. He's going for nine and for the eighth championship. Now, it's crazy down here. Here. you got all the photographers there's no garage area so anybody with an infield pass can come down here looking for an autograph and it's nuts it's a little more calm up on top where bob jenkins is going to be calling the action later today is it serene up there mr jenkins it is serene right now by the way why aren't you wearing a tie uh it's serene right now but believe me when the green flag drops and we get that first caution and it's not a question of if we get the first caution it's when Ned and Benny are going to be yelling my ear, and we're going to have some real fun here this afternoon. You know, the other thing I like about coming to Bristol, the incredible enthusiasm that the fans show. Unfortunately, John Kernan is right in the middle of them. <laughs> Not unfortunately, Bob. It is fortunately. They're expecting to have over 75,000 people sitting here in the grandstands today. You're going to watch the race. I'm up on row four. You almost need goggles because you're going to get a little uh, rubber kicked up with dust. But here you got to have your uh, cold drinks, your donuts, but you never know who you're going to meet. I met Juanita. She is from my hometown, 800 miles away, Bismarck, Missouri. Now let's go down to the grid and Dr. Jerry Punch. Thanks, John. You know, aside from safety, NASCAR's number one priority is competition, and they've got to be pleased with this starting lineup today. From first to last in qualifying, just 27 hundredths of a second, less than three-tenths. And we told you earlier in the week they went to the wind tunnel and tested all three brands to see how equal they were. Well, let me tell you how equal they are. Take a look here. On the pole is a Ford. Yeah, Ford manufacturer. On the outside front row, we have your basic Chevrolet Monte Carlo. And behind these two qualifying third is Kyle Petty's Pontiac. Ford Chevy Pontiac. Sounds pretty even to me, Dave. Here is, here is a picture of parody, Doc. We got the drivers of those three cars right here. Driver introductions are on the card right now. We are inside 30 minutes till the moment that they fire the engines. Driver introductions, Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, meet Kyle Petty. It's been a long time since he was up here in this neighborhood. You usually qualify about 33rd and you're third today. What'd you do to turn this deal around? I don't know, you're being generous giving me 33rd. I'm gonna tell you what, and this is the first time I've been inside the top 40 in about uh, two years. I don't know what we did. We just came up here and, and got a good lap, had a good car and everything we're good for us. Is he welcome to the party? Are you guys okay with him being up here in front with you? You bet. I'm glad to see it. <laughs> Listen, the kid next to you has been winning all the polls, but Mark Martin, you popped a great lap here to take the pole for this race. What was the secret to knocking this guy off? It was just going to take a great lap. We had a fast car, and I think that was the biggest secret, and we had a good lap. What about that tire secret that you talked about on our show yesterday? 
Well, people want to make a big deal. If you do anything different, they want to make a big deal out of it. I don't think it was. I don't think there was anything there. We had a fast car in practice, and we got a great lap. We did chose to do a little bit different on our tires than most people, but uh, I don't know that that was an advantage. You had an exciting lap. You about threw the thing out of the ballpark, didn't you? Yeah, I heard they had that on TV. I didn't want anybody else to know about that, but uh, it got very exciting coming off turn two. I, you know, everybody was saying, well, don't do it on your first lap, do it on the second lap, and for some reason I had to be bullheaded like I am and uh, tried to do it on the first lap, and it, it uh, bottomed out a little bit on me coming off of two, but uh, we just made a good, clean, smooth lap the second lap, and we're happy with second. I mean, uh, we figured we were about a fourth or fifth fast car, uh, we knew Mark was going to knock us off there at the end. I was already dressed and ready to head out the racetrack when he went. All right, good luck, guys. There's your front row, Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon. And we want to talk now about this business of the wind tunnel. They took three brands to the tunnel last week. NASCAR to do a bunch of tests. Time now to get the post-test report, and we'll get that from our Alan Bestwick and NASCAR today. Alan, what's the story down there? Well, Dave, I'm with the man in charge of all that, Mike Hilton, NASCAR's vice president of competition. Mike, did you get the information in the wind tunnel test you were looking for? And if so, what happens to it now? Alan, we're not really sure if we got uh, what we've got. We, we didn't really go with any predetermined question, so we weren't searching for any predetermined answer. It was a good opportunity to take all three makes to the tunnel, and with the cooperation of Ford and General Motors and Lockheed, and the uh, McClure team and Richard Petty team and the uh, Bobby Allison teams, we were able to do it. What we'll do is just try to piece all of our information together, make sense out of it, and then take it from there. That could take us some time, though, because there's a lot of information there. All right, Mike, thank you for your time. I know it's busy on race day. Have a good day today. Mike Helton, NASCAR's vice president of competition. Now, all this leaves us with a few unanswered questions. Do the Chevys really have a big advantage over the Ford? Do bodies and downforce really matter here today at Bristol? And if a Ford wins today, does that hurt their lobbying effort with NASCAR trying to get some rules concessions? Dave? All right. I, I got that all written down, Alan. I have our three questions noted, and I got a couple of experts, the guys with the ties, who can answer those for us. But we better get a break in here quickly because this thing's going to go all day long. It is crazy down here. The guys with the ties, of course, are Ned and Benny, and they're going to join our telecast here. 26 minutes and 30 seconds from the start of the engine. We are warming things up at Bristol International Raceway. It's NASCAR today. We're live, and we'll be back to look further into the Ford and Chevy story in just a moment. Uh, we just came down from there, so I can't. I'll get be able to see in a second. Uh, no, nah, I think they're still doing some ceremonial kinds of stuff. What are you looking for, Scott? What are you looking for? Uh, you go down the grid or the people? I, don't, I want to be here in the middle of this craziness. Okay. In fact, maybe you can show me that and then reveal me down here in the middle of all of it. Yeah, man. All right. Twenty-four. Yesterday's Goodies 250 from Gadsden, Alabama, in the Meineke Chevrolet, Steve Grissom. <laughs> Starting 33rd in the Pennzoil Pontiac. Your Earnhardt introduction is going to come pretty quick. I don't know if you want to try to cover that.
I have moved down from the uh, podium where they're introducing the drivers down here to the middle of the craziness. Can you see all these people back here? They're all just dying to get an autograph, but mostly we're all waiting the start of the engines. About 24 minutes, they'll light them up and go racing here in the Food City 500. Questions of the day. Does Chevy have an advantage in 95 Winston Cup? Is that advantage lessened here at Bristol? And if a Ford wins here, does it hurt the lobbying effort? We got some different opinions about the aerodynamic impact at Bristol from three different car camps. It's relatively slow. It's high speed track for a half mile, but it, that's still relatively low speed uh, aero wise. So I don't think that'll be a big issue here. You're badly mistaken if you think that downforce doesn't matter here. Badly mistaken. It won't make any difference because normally after about 20 laps, aren't you hood and fenders? <laughs> that's the Bristol story right there. They're going to beat him to pieces here today. Let's go to the guys with the ties. They have both won on this racetrack. Ned Jarrett drove the very first race here. Ned and Benny, what do you think about all this business of aerodynamics, Chevy versus Ford? What's your take on that? Go ahead, Ned. I can't wait to hear the answer for this. It seems really on the tracks that we've run on so far that the Chevrolets do have an aerodynamic uh, advantage. They seem to have a little bit more downforce than the Fords. It seems that way, but here at Bristol, I agree with uh, Barry Dodson. It really doesn't matter a great deal here at Bristol. Uh, maybe a little bit of downforce, but yesterday my brother Phil in a Busch Grand National race crashed, and he told me his car was just as fast after he knocked all the fenders off the right side as it was beforehand. Hmm. Well, that's interesting because I was going to argue with you because I believe that downforce is important here at Bristol because they're running, what, 135, 140 miles an hour on the straightaways here. But, uh, you know, time will tell how that will work. Well, how about uh, the if Ford wins here today? Is that going to take away their lobbying ability? I don't think so, because I think NASCAR is going to look at the next four or five races, here the next three short tracks, Talladega, and the road course. And I don't think that anyone really and truly has that big of an advantage at these five racetracks. It's going to be the teams racing each other. And thank God I can say that, that it's not a manufacturer that has an advantage. It's teams racing each other. I agree with you totally on that one, Benny. Let's go back to Dave now. All right, guys, appreciate the insight. I guarantee you, every one of those people, and there will be 75,000 of them here today, every one of those people has a very strong opinion about Ford versus Chevrolet. Yesterday, of course, a lot of talk about this whole wind tunnel deal and how it affected a couple of teams in particular. And I want to go to Jerry Punch and get one side of that story, the story involving last week's winner, Sterling Marlin. Jerry? Well, Dave, a lot of drivers at Darlington were going to bring the same car here to Bristol, and a lot of them were saying, man, I'm glad my car got a busted fender so I don't have to worry about going to the wind tunnel. This guy, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, won at Darlington last week, and therefore your car made a little trip across the country. How tough was it to get the race car you're going to run today back from the wind tunnel? Well, it wasn't too tough on the guys. They left, I guess, uh, Wednesday night, and it was back 8 o'clock Thursday morning, and, uh, you know, at 8 o'clock I had the car stripped and uh, just... We did a complete overhaul and uh, loaded at 3 o'clock that evening, so uh, it wasn't too hard on them. Now, you started fifth at Darlington, but today you start closer to Abington than Bristol. You're back in 31st spot. What happened in qualifying? We just totally missed it. Uh, you missed it uh, Friday, and uh, we got going good. It was one of the fastest cars yesterday evening, but we're starting way back, and uh, you just have to take our time going through the field and, and see if we slip up there and get another win. It'd be nice to win here at Bristol. Uh, it's getting it's Tennessee, and uh, Abington just right up the road, so we sure try. Sterling Marlin will start 31st, but he's got a lot of company back there with him, Dave. You know what happened here? They just introduced Dale Earnhardt a moment ago, and a lot of people cheered and a lot of people booed. It was remarkable. Where are we going next, guys? We're going to talk about Derek Cope. That's the other side of that uh, car that went to the wind tunnel story. Let's go to John Kernan. He's got that. Dave, I'm standing by with Derek. He's just waiting to get introduced and get cheered by all these 70,000, 75,000 plus fans. And Derek, you guys plan to run the car that you at Darlington that you, I mean, let me do that again. The car you ran at Darlington, you wanted to run here, but you were unable to do that, but you still qualified fourth, so you came through with a pretty good car. Well, we did. You know, we wanted to bring the Darlington car. Of course, it was impounded, and we couldn't do that. So we brought the Richmond car, which we had a good run with there, and uh, we're hoping to take it to Wilkesboro. But she performed well under pressure, and we'll see if we can't keep it up front today. But I want to thank I want to thank uh, Barry Pearson, who's up in New Hampshire at this time. He's fighting leukemia, and Barry, I uh, I know that uh, you're always pulling for us, and we're here with our prayers for you. Take care. As are all our prayers. Let's go back down to Dave. I'm not sure if it's a coincidence, but the fact that the guys who wanted to run their car and didn't get to qualified fourth, and the guys who got to run the car that they wanted to ended up back in the back strikes me as an interesting uh, coincidence. What do we got here? Inside 20 minutes, they're going to light them up and go in Bristol. 500 laps around this place will drive you crazy, but it'll be fun to watch. Stick around. We'll be right back.
You want to go to Craven's car or just a generic shot or what? I don't know. I just. Why don't you just maybe come up cold on a driver introduction? Just hit whoever's there. Billy, have a good day. Let me just do a little walk along the cars. We'll get some movement into it. Don't, don't walk too far because John's down there. Let me go tell John. All right. Starting 20th from Dawsonville, Georgia, in the McDonald's Board. The view from high overhead, Bristol International Raceway, provided by the Family Channel Blimp as they continue their nationwide tour in support of the Children of America and with a special interest, of course, in the number 16 car here as the Family Richard Channel Holder colors the will be piloted by Ted Musgrave. Here at the Bristol International Raceway's Food City Let's give a listen to driver interviews. Where are we in the field? Chevrolet from Portland, Oregon, Chuck Bound. Ah, yeah, Chuck Bound. Starts 16th here today. Gets a big round of applause. Fans are Starting all happy to see him back into action after that uh, injury. Injury. 16 cars into the field. This is going to be a 36 car field, and they're lined up. We're right down here in the heart of the action. I want to tell you about who's not here, though, because that was a big story in qualifying. This is the second anniversary, of course, of the death of Alan Kowicki, then the Winston Cup champion right here at Bristol, and a sad anniversary it is. And the Hooters team, of course, went with Loy Allen as their driver after Allen was killed. And ironically, on this second anniversary weekend, Loy Allen has resigned as the driver of that car. Hooters says they will stay with the team as a sponsor. Hut Strickland jumped into the car to try to qualify it and failed to do so. And he was doing double duty this week because he had previously been hired to come in as the coach for the Kinzer effort and try to get Steve Kinzer up to speed and into the field. That effort failed. Kinzer did not make the show. Here is the rundown of the drivers who did not make it. And for Kinzer, it was painful. He has only one provisional left, and he was not able to use it here because he didn't have enough points to go with it. So Kinzer, notable among the drivers who did not make the field here today. There's been a lot of speculation that he was going to be out of there as the driver of that automobile. But his team says, uh-uh. As a matter of fact, his team manager went out of his way to seek me out yesterday and said, I want to get on television to tell everybody how we feel about our driver, Steve Kinzer. The guy's only been to five races. And I just, you know, like the media's been real hard on him and, you know, like they anticipate driver changes and what have you. But uh, Kenny and uh, Steve and I sat down and we discussed all this and we knew it was going to be hard. And if Steve Kendra's man enough to go out there and take all the harassment and the humiliation that he's been taking, I think ought to have, uh, ought to be tough enough to stand in there with him. And that's, you know, that's where I'm coming from. And, you know, as far as I'm concerned, there's no driver change in the future for me. Sounds like a vote of confidence if I ever heard one. There is also great confidence, speaking of Winston Cup rookies, in the camp of Ricky Craven. He said, man, it's going to be tough for us young guys these next three weeks with these short tracks coming up. Went out and popped the seventh fastest qualifying lap of the weekend, and he's standing by with John Kernan. John. Well, actually, we look a lot alike, Joe Dave. It's Jerry Punch, uh, but I'm with Ricky Craven. Uh, and, Ricky, you know, you talked about the fact that it's going to be tough on rookies to qualify these short tracks. I mean, you've qualified twice in the top ten. You start seventh today. Uh, you got to feel pretty good about your shot. Yeah, you know, it's not only tough for us rookies. It's tough for all the competitors. It's, it's the focus going into the weekend. And if, you, uh, if you're fortunate enough to get through Friday, have a good top 20 qualifying, then you get excused for Saturday. But Friday and Saturday are, are the focus. And then if you get through that, Sunday. 
Three times he's been the top finishing rookie this year. He starts seven today. It's a good racetrack for him. Best of luck to you. Thank you very much. We'll let you head to the race car. It's getting ready, getting closer to race time, Dave. Jerry, John, Ned, Benny, Bob, we got so many announcers on this telecast, I can't keep them straight. Pit crews are getting ready for the action. We're getting close to firing up the engines. NASCAR today is live from Bristol, getting ready to light them up for 500 laps. Stick around for the Food City 500. Liz, when you see Jerry Punch. How are we on time, time-wise? Ned and I still have two minutes. Big wreck last weekend at Darlington. One of, what were there, Ned Benny? 40 or so crashes up there. This was one of them. This was the worst in terms of injury. Bobby Labonte came out of this with a broken shoulder blade and as a result has had to go to a strategy here this weekend of starting the car and then going to a replacement driver. And I believe that's the guy we're going to hear from next because that is going to be a big disadvantage here on a racetrack where they run 16 second laps. Let's find out from Jerry Punch how that's going to play out here today. Well, Dave, David Green is a defending Bush Series champion. And, David, uh, when did you find out that your job description was going to change this week? Well, uh, I was busy working in the shop, you know, and Bobby had me in there, and uh, Donna called me, his wife, and said, uh, we need to go to Charlotte. So I said, what for? And she said, come on, we got to go. So riding down to Charlotte, uh, he said, well, we might get to drive that Interstate Battery Chevrolet this weekend. And I just about jumped out the door for excitement. So you thought what was a shopping trip ended up being a, a trip to the race car, car garage. Uh, how are you going to play today? What happens at the beginning of the race? Well, our plan is, as usual, for Bobby to start uh, to get those driver points and even the car owner points for Joe Gibbs Racing. But, uh, you know, Bobby's still sore. Uh, the interstate battery Monte Carlo is awesomely fast, and uh, I'm just trying to learn as quick as I can. But I'm going to step in for him uh, when he needs it. Hopefully he'll go for a long time, but if not, uh, I'll be ready. And, gentlemen, they have been very, very pleased with watching this young man in the car. He has been extremely fast in practice here, subbing for Bobby Labonte. Wish him a good run here this weekend. I've been thinking all week, Benny Parsons, about that Darlington deal. I've never seen such a crash fest up there, but that I'm not as old as you are. Did you see that as a dramatically different Darlington based on the fact that they put the new pavement on the place? David, I can't believe it. Everyone says, I've never seen anything like that before. All those crashes. Folks, you should have been going to Darlington in the 70s because it happened each and every time, both in April and in September when we go back there for the Mountain Dew Southern 500. Crash fell to fair. There we see Greg Sachs backing in the wall. Here's a 33 car. Robert Presley spinning down in turn one. Backs in the wall. And here Michael Waltrip, Mark Martin, and Rusty Wallace get tangled up on a restart. Another crash coming off the corner. It's like that every time we go to Darlington. And coming to Bristol is no piece of cake. It's not going to be much different, Ben. In fact, the, the record was set here for caution flags a few years ago when it's like 20 caution flags. Who knows what will happen. If it's it, yesterday was any indication in the Bush race, I think that we will see some action here today. Just time after time, there were like eight cautions in the first 100 laps of the uh, Good is 250 here yesterday, so I think we will see a lot of action. Steve Grissom, of course, came home the winner. Mark Martin second, Chad Little third, Kenny Wallace fourth, and Terry Labonte in fifth place. Sixth through tenth, Johnny Benson, Brad Teague, Mike Wallace, Curtis Markham, and Jason Keller. 
Okay, we'll be back with more from Bristol right after this. Nelson's going back over to see if he can speed it up. Behind me, Jeff Bodine has just buckled in, made the unequivocal, made the unequivocal prediction on local television last night that a Ford will win this sixth race of the 1995 season. He'll be starting over here on the front stretch pits. There are back stretch pits as well here, and that could be a big story in terms of the 1995 out of the frying pan and into the, into the fire 500. And for that story, I want to hear from John Kernan. John? Well, I'm with Dale Jarrett. He starts 19th. There are 19 front row pit stalls, but Dale Earnhardt, who qualified 25th, the defending national champion, he gets one of those, so Dale's kind of the odd man out. You've got to go to the backstretch pits. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, qualify better. That's all that I can say. Uh, you know, it's uh, something that, that is for the champion, and, uh, you know, whether you like it or you don't, it, you know the rules, so it's just a matter I should have qualified a little bit faster. Well, yesterday in the Bush race, Steve Grissom qualified a little bit slower. He pitted on the back stretch, but he won that race. Now let's go down to Dr. Jerry Punch. For you fans who want to come to Bristol, Tennessee and have never been here, I encourage you definitely to come. You know, they're trying their darndest to build seats as fast as they can. Behind me, they have put 3,300 additional seats in. They were sold out immediately. And also, they put 10 25-seat suites up in turns three and four. They sold those suites in 38 minutes. And folks, I am told they had an engineer come and look at the racetrack and predicted they could put as many as 103,000 seats at Bristol Raceway. That would make this facility the largest sporting arena in Tennessee. And for you football fans, that means it's even larger than Needland Stadium in Knoxville. And folks, that is some kind of place to watch a race. Dave? All right, clock continues to tick. We're getting close to the start. Five minutes from now, they will fire the engines. Shortly thereafter, they will send them off on 500 tours of this half-mile racetrack, the steepest bank track on the Winston Cup circuit is 36 degrees and getting around this place 500 laps safely is going to be the key to victory here today. It's going to be a terrific show. Bob Jenkins will be calling the action. Ned and Benny analyzing it for you. Of course, Doc and John will be pit side with every single bit of it. We're going to wrap things up here for NASCAR today. Remember, Motor Racing Network has NASCAR today on the radio on your MRN stations all week long. Next week, NASCAR today, split deal. I'm going to Tucson. Allen's going to North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, and keep you up to date on all the Winston Cup action. That ought to be pretty cool. That is the bottom line on where we'll be next week. I certainly hope you will stick around here at Bristol because things are about to get crazy. Thanks very much for being part of NASCAR today. We'll say so long and take a quick moment to introduce the guy who's going to call the action. When we come back, it's going to be Bob Jenkins of the Food City 500. Last week, the track too tough to tame, Darlington, lived up to its reputation. A record 15 cautions took its toll on man and machine. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief when they left. Or did they? Oh, wow. Whoa, was that close. Folks, if you like last week, you're going to love this week. <laughs> You can't cope with Bristol. Oh, Bristol. Not again. Oh, boy. Everybody's smoking at Bristol. Oh, boy. 
this ain't no Sunday afternoon drive. ESPN, the world's leader in motorsports coverage, welcomes you live to Bristol International Raceway in Tennessee for the NASCAR Winston Cup Food City 500. It is a very cool and somewhat windy day in the Northeast Hills of Tennessee. The temperature only 52 degrees and skies are overcast at the moment. The quest for the cup standings after five races of the 1995 season show us that Dale Earnhardt has not won a race, but he's on top because of consistency. Sterling Marlin 67 behind, and then things really tighten up with only five points separating third through fifth. Six through 10 are separated by 42 points with John Andretti holding down the 10th spot. Hi everyone, I'm Bob Jenkins. Welcome to Bristol. Get set for some great action. You know, officially the short track season opens in Richmond. It's less than a mile in length, but I think most people feel that these next three races constitute the short track season. Bristol, North Wilkesboro, and Martinsville. And what a better place to start than right here at Bristol with 36 degrees of banking and speeds around 125 miles an hour. Both Ned and Benny have won on this racetrack, but when Ned won, the track wasn't in its current configuration. Bob, it was, it was the same length as it is today, but the banks were only 24 degrees. But we had a lot of action on the racetrack back then, but not nearly as much today because the speeds were not as high. There's no escape routes. When someone gets in trouble in front of you, there's not much of a place to go. Similar to the situation last week at Darlington, so I think we're going to see a lot of action here again today. This racetrack was banked at 36 degrees in 1969. It's fashioned after Dayton, Ohio, Salem, Indiana, and Winchester, Indiana, some racetracks that the ARCA division used to run. But you're right, it's a tough race track the groove is very narrow and the car's awfully fast we are going to see more like we saw at Darlington last week some guys had some trouble in inspection Bill Weber on that story well Benny when you come here it's not really the aerodynamics there are some other things teams are looking for and NASCAR is looking for them too first of all tire stagger you don't hear much about it anymore because Goodyear builds it into the race tires here's how your passenger car travels down the highway in a straight line like this on a flat surface. But here's how the cars at Bristol try and get around this track, constantly turning left. Left side tires bigger, or smaller rather, than the right sides. Now when able to enhance that, teams are allowed to build in camber. That's the angle at which the tire attacks, attracts, uh, attacks the track rather. 1.8 degrees. If you go to 2.0, say that's that, you can't get through inspection. That's what happened here. But when teams got here, the tire stagger was greater than they had anticipated. More stagger meant more camber. Terry Labonte's Kellogg Chevrolet was one of the teams that could not get through inspection. They tried three times. That's why they're one of the fastest cars, but they're pitting on the backstretch. They've got a lot of company back there. John Kernan has some of that. Bill, along with Labonte, you got to look at Sterling Marlin now. They had the same problem. They were able to get it fixed, go through the inspection line, and qualify during the first round, but they weren't very fast. Sterling starting all the way back to the 31st spot. He will join Terry Labonte, who starts 21st after second round qualifying on the backstretch. Very tough for them to win from there. This is kind of a jumbled field, but one guy who really not a surprise that he's starting back in the 25th spot is a defending national champion, Dale Earnhardt. Dale Earnhardt, though, will be pitting on the front stretch because he is the champ. Now let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch. Well, one driver whose week went from bad to worse at Darlington is beside me. That's Bobby Labonte. After fighting a flu all week and feeling miserable just trying to practice the car, his week got considerably worse on lap 217. Take a look at what happened. One of 15 caution flags, a record at Darlington, and Bobby a victim trying to slow down to avoid two spinning cars in front. His interstate battery Chevrolet spins, and he gets tagged right in the door by Dick Trickle. Now, Labonte able to get himself out of the car to the wall, but unfortunately, after being taken to McLeod Regional Medical Center, the diagnosis was number one, an atypical pneumonia, number two, a cracked scapula or shoulder blade. Now, Bobby is going to start the car today. He did not qualify it. David Green qualified it. Bobby, how long will you run? I'm sure I'll run to the first caution, Jerry. You know, that's, uh, you know, here at Bristol, it's so tough. And I mean, it's it's hard. It's going to be hard to get, uh, hard to get out of here just because I don't want to. But uh, uh, better for the whole Interstate Batteries race team this weekend for me to give David a shot at it because uh, he practiced all week, qualified the car, you know, and uh, he's got a good idea of what the car is going to do. So this one's good for him. Well, as Bobby Labonte fires him up, then they have given the command on pit road. Bob, he is one of a number of recognizable names that will miss this race today. Well, that's right. Uh, boy, Alex. 
Allen has resigned from the Hooters team in the past week and Hut Strickland was here trying to get that car up to qualifying speed. However, he did not qualify for the race. There are a total of eight drivers that did not make it into the show, including Steve Kinzer, who didn't qualify fast enough. The engines have been started. We'll be back with the starting lineup and the Food City 500 in a moment. Can I take this off? Okay, boy, you're still pretty low there, Neil, buddy. Yeah, you sure are. Can you guys see back there? Can you see the racetrack? Tell me when you... Bill, can you see the racetrack? We didn't have the graphic up on uh, on the, uh, or was it not planned on those that were out of the right, that did not make the field? Yes, I can, Ron. Yep. <sighs> okay. Harold, you can stand over there behind Ned if you'd like. Nobody will be there. Both you guys can if you'd like. Just don't get drunk, fall on Ned. ESPN Speed World coverage is being brought to you by Haviland Formula 3 Motor Oil. Add more life to your car. By Firestone Retailers. Come in now for the April price performance sale. And by Napa Auto Parts. We keep America running. Well, the cars begin to move off of the grid here on the front stretch. Let's take a look at this track in detail. There it is, 0.533 miles in length, 650 feet on the front stretch and back stretch, 36 degrees of banking in the corners, and the straightaways are banked at 16 degrees. Now the race analysis. We'll go 500 laps. The race record is 101 miles an hour. They'll pit for fuel at about 160, and the purse amounts to over a million dollars. Here is the starting lineup for today's race. Mark Martin is on the pole in the Valvoline Ford, car number six with 124.605 mile per hour run. Jeff Gordon from Pittsburgh, Indiana in the DuPont Chevrolet starts outside the front row. He qualified at 124.4. In the second row, it is Kyle Petty in the Coors Light Pontiac, car number 42. Outside of him in the second row will be Derek Cope from Spanaway, Washington in the Straight Arrow Products Ford, car number 12. In the third row, it's Bobby Labonte starting the race, soon to be replaced by David Green. Ted Musgrave on the outside of that row. In the fourth row, it is Ricky Craven and John Andretti. As you look at the rest of the starting field, I guess we can anticipate another action-packed afternoon of racing. Huh, Benny? I would almost guarantee it. And you know, David Green qualified that Interstate Batteries Chevrolet in fifth spot. And guess what? Bobby Labonte, the fact that he is injured, he has chosen to go to the back of the field. He's going to start last after a great qualifying run. And from row 10 on back, all of those drivers are spit hitting on the back stretch today. There we see Bobby Labonte, who has already gone to the inside and worked his way back to the back of the pack. We're about ready to go racing. 
I think we're going to go uh, one more lap before we get the green flag. Okay. There's last week's winner, Sterling Marlin, way back in row number 16. And here are the provisional starters, Michael Waltrip and Steve Grissom, and Ward Burton and Dave Marcus. So the field has been given the signal now. One lap until the green. We talked about the eight drivers that did not qualify for the race. There they are. They include Joe Nemechek and uh, Butch Miller, Steve Kinzer, Strickland, Standridge, Mike Wallace, Jeremy Mayfield, and Brad T. Well, we got a lot of in cars for you again. Rusty Wallace for one. Mark Martin has a roof cam. Dick Trickle will also have a roof cam on the top of his Quality Care Ford. Ted Musgrave will provide us with one also. And we'll be listening to him on the radio. There is Morgan Shepard and also one in Kenny Schrader's car. Here comes the field off the fourth corner and the Boot City 500 is under green. seen anyone here at Bristol in the last couple of years. You really did. That outside, especially in the early going, is tough to get traction on. Bill Elliott's caught up there way back in the pack and uh, wants to get back in single line. We hardly saw two groups here at all yesterday afternoon, but perhaps with the with more rubber being put down on the racetrack since then, we'll see two groups here this afternoon. It is Mark Martin leading. Kyle Petty running a close second, and here's Wait. the action from Morgan Shepard's car. Look wow, at this. Petty, Kyle Petty. Petty noses his way to the inside of Mark Martin and takes the lead, and Coke goes to second. And Mark Martin will go to fourth. He got caught up on that outside once Kyle got on the inside of him. So Kyle Petty has the lead of this race. Kyle Petty led the race in Daytona. Sydney hasn't led, I don't think so. Got to feel good at the front of the pack. No kidding, and he's pulling away from uh, Coke, Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin, Ricky Craven, Rusty Wallace, Jeff Bodine, John Andretti, Ted Musgrave, Jeff Burton, and Ricky Rudd. And there Jeff Gordon goes into second place behind Derek Coke. Mark Martin trying to get alongside Coke, and he is, and will take that spot away. Now let's see if Coke can get back down in. Yes, he got back. They had enough, enough of a gap there in front of Ricky Craven that he could get back in line. Kyle Petty pulled away a little bit. Yeah, sure is. Again, we talk about the spotters and their importance, but they're real important here because they can tell a driver when he can get back down into that inside line without hitting another car. Kyle Petty would run awful good here if he liked the place, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did tell us last week he didn't like it, didn't he? In no uncertain terms. Jeff Gordon, of course, dominated the race at Darlington last week, led the most laps before being taken out in an accident. We're inside Mark Martin's car. We were there for a moment as he runs back in third position. Then comes Cope, and then the battle between Ricky Craven and Rusty Wallace, who won his very first NASCAR Winston Cup event on this track. That's fifth spot. Rusty's trying to take it away. He's alongside. We'll take that spot away from Craven. Now Craven's going to get on the outside. It's going to be problems for him. Yeah, he's going to lose some positions here because he just can't get back to the inside. There goes Jeff Bodine, John Andretti, Ted Musgrave. And Andretti trying to get alongside Jeff Bodine. Jeff Bodine blew an engine in practice yesterday afternoon, hit the wall. Only got a couple of laps of practice. Had to spend, they were here at 6 30 last night, still working on that car. Yeah, when he blew the engine yesterday in the final practice session, he cut an oil line and it went into the pit area, but it didn't strike anybody. Here's John Kearney. Yes, Bob, that was very fortunate. Nobody got hurt. He also, Ricky Rudd, got into that oil, but Jeff Bodine, his crew worked till 7 o'clock last night, and they just finished that car up this morning. They had to replace the rear end housing, the left railing arm, and all of the right front suspension, as well as the motor. Here's the battle for sixth position. John Andretti trying to get to the inside of Jeff Bodine. In the meantime, Bodine catches up to Wallace and Cope. Yeah, Rusty. Oh! Bodine is 
way up out of the group. I think it must have gotten just a little bit of a tap from the 37 car of John Andretti. And Jeff Bodine and uh -oh. Darrell Waltrip. Oh, and Jeff finally does spin. Does a 360 so far. No one is involved except Bobby Hamilton. He spun to the bottom of the track, but he too is going, and so no caution. Both drivers doing 360s and going right on. Wow. We see Terry Labonte in the five car. Bodai trying to get some positions back that he lost in this incident. Here we see Jeff Bodine. He's caught to the outside. Now, Darrell Waltrip has plans of going, and Jeff Bodine comes down. It looks like he and Darrell might have touched. Ed, what do you think? It was very slight, if, if so at all. But uh, anyway, Jeff spins around. Does a 360. You say he keeps going. Let's see if we can see here. I think there yeah. was probably just yeah. a little bit of a tap from Darrell. He thought he would follow him. You saw his left front smoking as he tried to stop to avoid hitting Jeff Bodine. Yeah, he was on the brakes uh, trying very hard not to make contact, but he made slight contact. And there down to the right on the inside of the racetrack, you see Bobby Hamilton spinning around, but he also kept going. On a cool Sunday afternoon here in Bristol, Tennessee, there are the top five after 18 of 500 laps in the Food City 500. This is going to be a struggle, Neil. I, we, at least I have just got to turn you up so loud to hear you that it's blasting everything. Are you guys having that problem, or yeah. is it just me? No. No. Yep, he's not. Not a lot of his own himself today. Check. Check. One, two, one, two. Does my microphone sound okay? Check. Oh, okay. I just wondered why my microphone was okay. Neil, I hear you fine. Yes, I hear you fine. I hear you fine. I hear you, Chevy. No, no. I hear you, Chevy. Yes, I do, Neil. It's a little better. You're awfully low. Yep. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. Okay. Yep. I think we'll be okay. Okay, Neil. Yeah. I think with better. programming, lower, I can hear you, okay. but it's uh, it's a struggle. My information was he led at Atlanta, also, right? Oh, he did. Kyle did. I think he led one lap, didn't he? Did Kyle lead one lap at Atlanta? Huh? It says here in Atlanta, who's right? I think he did lead a lap down there, yeah. Did too. You can bring the programming down further, Ron, if you will. Chevy, I can barely hear you, Chevy. Much better, much better. Welcome back to live coverage of the Food City 500 from Bristol. The leader is Kyle Petty on the left of your screen now in the middle in the blue and red number 42. Jeff Gordon is chasing him. We talked about how Kyle has led a couple of races this year in Daytona and Atlanta, but he has not led this many laps since 1993. Wow. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch with more. Now, Kyle Petty's crew chief, Barry Dodson, is sort of rolling the dice when it comes to the engine here today. While most teams have gone a little conservative on their gear, running about a 514 after qualifying, Kyle has gone the other direction, according to Barry Dodson. They have put a 5.43 gear in that Pontiac, and they are turning right at 9,000 RPMs a lap. Last time by, we were told Kyle said it's about 8,900 RPMs. And, guys, that's going to be awfully tough on the bounce break. As a matter of fact, I saw Keith Simmons and his crew this morning putting new valve springs on that 42 car in anticipation of what Jerry Punch is talking about. They knew they were going to turn it a lot. They needed the best valve spring they could get. Now the question becomes, can it last for 500 laps around this place? That's the next question. Will that baby hang together? There we see Bobby Labonte. He wanted a caution flag early on to let David Green get in the car, but it looks like he's going to be a lap down when that happens. 
a lot of these cars that they're coming up on, they actually caught the tail end of the lead lap a little bit earlier than they normally would, but when we had that situation with Jeff Bodine spinning, everybody had to back off back there. The leaders were out there running in free traffic, free off traffic, and so they were able to really pick up a lot of speed on the other cars. Watching from Mark Martin's roof cam now, he's running in third spot. Up ahead are Jeff Gordon and Kyle Petty. Now Jeff looks to the inside of Kyle into turn one. Cannot make the move. As a matter of fact, that group has pulled away from Kyle Petty. Bobby Labonte and that group of cars has put a couple of car lengths on Kyle. It's like uh, his car is getting loose, pushing something is happening to it. And Jeff trying to look once again inside. See how close to the bottom of the racetrack they run, especially going into the turn and coming off the turn. And then they go up next to the wall as they come out of the turn. Looks like he's got to run. Jeff, whoa, didn't quite make it. <laughs> Jerry, what's the update on the Bobby Labonte David Green situation? Well, Bob, they would like to have had a caution about lap 10 to be able to get Bobby out of the car. You know, it's not as much the shoulder, although it's very physically demanding here. The pain, it's pretty uncomfortable, but it's the pneumonia that creates a problem. Bobby would run maybe five or six laps in practice and come in and be literally out of breath in the race car. That's their primary concern, the fact that he can get exhausted very quickly, not the shoulder, but the lung situation. So they're hoping for a caution at any time. But as Bobby told me, we need a caution early, and I just hope it isn't me. Yeah, he certainly doesn't need to hit anything right now with the pain he's in because of the shoulder. There we see Earnhardt. Dale has uh, moved up to 11th position already. There's our first three cars, Kyle Petty, Jeff Gordon, Mark Martin. And you see that black car just coming into the picture, Rusty Wallace, now running fourth. And John Andretti is in fifth position. There's Rusty and Andretti. Dale Earnhardt is six and seven tenths seconds behind the leader. I'll tell you, coming from what, 24th position? And here's a battle for the lead coming off turn four. Jeff Gordon will get the lead. Let's see if Mark Martin could go to second as they keep Petty high on the track. But Kyle fights back and prevents Martin from getting second spot. But we do have a new leader, Jeff Gordon. Now, Mark Martin moves alongside Kyle, and they race side by side down the straightaway. I believe Mark is going to get second position here in turn number two. Once you get on that inside, they're touching the field off. Now yeah, look at Rusty Wallace. Wallace. Yeah, he has caught them. John Andretti coming right along with him. Sean Parker, one of the pitchy crewmen, last night told me in the hotel that Rusty's car is running awfully well. They felt like they could win today. Well, Rusty is the master of the short track. He has won nine of the last 20 short track races, and Dale Earnhardt picks up another position that puts him now in ninth. He started 25th. There is Jeff Gordon, whose best finish here at Bristol, 17th. It occurred in his first start here in April of 1993. By the way, Jeff has led at least one lap in every single event so far this year. Here are the third, fourth, and fifth place cars. Kyle Petty, Rusty Wallace, and John Andretti. And you can see that Jeff Gordon is a few car lengths ahead of that group. Bobby Labonte still is on the lead lap. Now he may be going a lap down. Yes, as Gordon and Martin come to the inside. Morgan Shepard and Bobby Hamilton, the Sitco Ford and the STP Pontiac, both those cars have been running together since the very beginning of the race. Hamilton spun. And you can see that the leader is not too far behind them there, just uh, for the car separating them. Rick Mass is right on the back bumper of Bobby Hamilton. They are 29th and 30th. Rick Mast is 31st, and he will be the next car to go a lap down. Just ahead of Jeff. 
It's not raining. I saw a drop of water on the lens of the camera. It is not raining. The way it feels outside there, if there's going to be any precipitation, <laughs> oh, it'll be in the form of snow. It's cool here this afternoon. There's a oh. couple of folks in the booth with us that drove over from Boone this morning said they saw some yeah. snow on the way over. Yeah, I heard on the radio that there were some snowflakes in the area. That's occasionally sunny, though, and when the sun is out, it's much more pleasant. Doesn't take long to get down that front straightaway, does it? Man. Well, they on the straightaway about two seconds or something like that. Two and a half seconds, something Man. like that. But in that two and a half seconds, only about a second of that, you can really relax. The rest time, you're steering off the corner or steering into the corner. And Hamilton just needs to get by, wants to get by desperately. They continue to run in single file at the moment with Jeff Gordon leading Mark Martin, Kyle Petty, Rusty Wallace, and John Andretti. We'll be right back. We're in good shape on the levels now, guys. <laughs> when you turn the program level down, it really helped us. He's fine, hey, Chevy. Go ahead, Chevy. I, I, no, I, if he's talking, I don't hear him. I hear you. There's going to be a crash in a minute. Yeah. Oh, up, 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 up. That was. Yeah, uh, Morgan. City 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Bristol International Raceway in Tennessee. See, Jeff Gordon has been able to pass Rick Mass, put in the one car, the skull car a lap down. And then he went up on the outside and did it, too. That was pretty impressive that he could move up on the outside. Of course, Rick gave him plenty of running room up there, but still, that outside groove is still not the best. Michael Walker, the 30 car, going a lap down to our leader. And 43 car Bobby Hamilton trying all he can to stay in the lead lap. See, Bobby Labonte has been able to keep up with these guys since they passed him. But he'll lap down the interstate battery car. For somebody with a broken shoulder blade, he is performing very well on a physically demanding racetrack. Michael Walker just almost lost his car there going into turn two. Went high, and Bobby Labonte was able to dip under him. And now here comes John and Reddy. Ted Musgrave's family channel four. He goes to the inside of Michael Waltrip, and here comes Dale Earnhardt, who is up to seven. That is unbelievable. I noticed him in practice yesterday. He was very, very fast. I told some people this morning, they asked me who were the good cars here. I said, well, the uh, six car, of course, Mark Martin, the 24 car, and Dale Earnhardt. Started back in 24th place. He was awfully fast in practice there yesterday. Just went to sixth. By the way, this is the place that Dale Earnhardt won his first NASCAR Winston Cup event back in 1979 in only his 16th start. Here's an Napa field summary. The entire 36-car field and how they are running at the moment. And every car is still running. Don't think we've had a car go in the pits yet. I don't believe so. Look at Sterling Marlin up to 15th already. Yep. No caution so far. The laps clicking off very, very quickly. Boy, if we could run this thing without a caution, which, by the way, has never been done, this thing could be over in a couple of hours. But uh, what would we do then? Yeah. Three moments. Just wait. Yeah, right. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. <laughs> One car is two laps down. Ward Burton is 36th, is two laps down. Everybody else on the lead lap or just one lap down. Ooh, Ooh Kyle. Kyle. A little sideways coming off the corner. Car is loose. 
Rusty Wallace got alongside Kyle just a moment ago, almost lost it as he tried to pass Kyle. And look at John Andretti. And Earnhardt is right on the back of this group of cars. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and back in seventh is Musgrave. Tight battle here for position early. Well, you remember I said that Earnhardt was sixth and seven tenths seconds behind Jeff Gordon, uh, or the leader he was. Now he is two seconds yeah. behind the leader. I think Kyle Petty was leading at that time. Closing in. Here's Dale Earnhardt's progress to sixth position after his 25th place start. Doesn't take him long. Now looking to the inside of John Andretti, unable to make the pass in turn one, but now he does. By the way, our congratulations to John and Nancy Andretti because on Wednesday afternoon they became the parents of a new baby girl, Olivia Elizabeth. And it says on the back of his car, it's a girl. Right on the back. Seven pounds, 11 ounces, and 19 and a half inches long. Good, healthy baby. We wish Nancy and John the best. Here comes Sterling Marlin, who has moved up to 15th position at the moment. Make that 14th. He started 31st. Last week's winner at Darlington. With this insane car, as a matter of fact. Bill Weber has more on Sterling Arlen. Bob, that's the same car as Benny mentioned that they won with last week at Darlington, but then NASCAR took it to two wind tunnels. Tony Glover told me they got it back Thursday morning, did a complete overhaul of the car, which normally takes three to four days. They did it one day and got it here. They said they weren't good in qualifying, weren't happy with the tires, but they had practiced well and they expect to do well. They are doing well, but Rusty Wallace just lost, what, one position, Benny? Two positions. Two. Both Earnhardt and John Andretti was able to get by Rusty. It looks like Rusty is fighting a loose, loose condition. We're watching from the roof cam on the Family Channel 4, driven by Ted Musgrave. Here is Earnhardt. Oh, he gives a, Kyle Petty a little bit of a love tap. Well, Kyle got a little bit sideways coming off the turn. Earnhardt had a run, so he just ran right up on him and bumped him. And Jeff Bodine, ooh, almost losing again off a of turn two as Earnhardt gets on the inside of Kyle Petty now to make the pass. And the Bristol race fans are on their feet cheering for Dale Earnhardt, who picks up another position, and John Andretti is going to Man, I thought Kyle was coming down right in the nose of that 37. We're going to have a wreck right there. But they survived. They survived. Thank goodness. Yeah. Good driving, guys. I was talking to him, I was, that's what I was talking about. From inside Rusty Wallace's car, you see he's turning, turning as he comes off the corner. That time he did not have to catch the back end. Now Andretti once again tries to position himself inside of Kyle for the fourth position. And battle for the lead. Mark Martin is to the inside of Jeff Gordon in the back stretch and they touch. Jeff holds on to the lead. Yeah, Mark backed off. Didn't, didn't drive. He could have driven on him to turn real hard and maybe wreck both of them. He chose not to do that. Mark. What happened is Jeff Gordon tried to... Oh, here we go. What, the, what position is this? So, Fourth. The four spot. Yep, John's got it. And up front, Mark is going to try it again, and this time he makes it. Mark Martin becomes our third leader of the afternoon. And I think that Jeff... Gordon, I think, really got tired of trying to pass that traffic. Oh, boy, Rusty and Kyle almost wrecked over there. I'm telling you, Ned, they sure did. It's glorified bumper cars at the moment, but everybody is hanging on and not spinning. Man. Here it is again, off of the second corner. Well, we're going to see Rusty get his left wheel down on the... Pavement. He and Kyle touch a little bit. Kyle goes high. Rusty gets by on the inside. John Curtin has more on Rusty Wallace. Bob, I just talked to his crew chief, Robin Pemberton. He said that Rusty's complained the car is fairly loose. He's having a hard time driving it. They're about 70, 65 laps away if we stay green from pitting. At that point in time, they'll make some adjustments to try and tighten the car up. 
laps have been completed. About 160 to 65 is the pit window. Here is a battle between Bill Elliott and Dick Trickle. And let's see, where are they running? They are running 24th and 25th. Oh, and Elliott spins. No, he didn't. Well, I thought he went. How could he save it? He lost a lap, but he didn't spin. He got sideways, and Mark went under him, and now Jeff Gordon does, and others, but Elliott saved it. Man, oh, man, how can he save the thing? It's 90 degrees. I tear the body of Darlton last week. Now watch this, folks. You tell me how Bill Elliott's able to keep this car going straight. Here he goes down in turn one. Down the straightaway, I'm sorry. Into turn one. Goes in the corner, and the car just goes sideways. Mine got a little bit of a nudge there from Toya. I think that touch going in at the turn. Bill Elliott, a winner of this race back in 1988. One win at Bristol. The lead is held by Mark Martin, who also has a win at Bristol. That came in the Budweiser 500 in 1993. Back in just a moment. Okay. Racing of a different kind tonight, a little slower and a lot less noisy. A special presentation of America's Cup 95 as Team Dennis Conner takes on America Cube's Mighty Mary. Now, if Dennis loses, it'll be the first time we'll be out of the America's Cup this early. Join us at 8.30 tonight for same-day coverage here on ESPN. That's 8.30 Eastern time with the eastern part of the United States now on Daylight Saving Time. And this is Ken Schrader, Brett Bodine, and Chuck Bound. That is a race for 15th, 16th, 17th, and Bound moves into 17th. Gary Cope also goes by Brett Bodine. Gary Cope was up among the top five in the early going. He slid back to 18th. There's Schrader in 16th and Bound going to the inside, trying to pick up a position in turn one. They go through side by side. And he'll get it. Derek Cope will come run along with him and Brett Bodine as well. And Mark Martin is having trouble getting around the 40 car. And here Jim Gordon is trying to take the lead. They're side by side with a slower car of Sachs right in front of them. But the slower car is going to mean that Bernard's going to take second. Martin. Oh, how is he? <laughs> Whoa. Oh, and Gordon's way out of shape, and he saves it. Down on the apron, he moves up right beside Earnhardt and is not intimidated whatsoever. And once again, the 40 car of Sachs is in the preferred line, so Gordon backs off, lets Earnhardt go by, and Dale Earnhardt is now in second place. Yeah, with all this, Mark Martin has a lead. In fact, quite a, a nice lead. 
Dale Earnhardt is in second position. Here's how all this occurred. Well, of course, they came up on the 40 car of Sachs and Jeff Gordon was down on the inside. Earnhardt decided he'd follow Martin up there. And we got Kyle Petty in the wall, Ned. No Kyle. caution. Still no caution. He bumped the wall in turn number two, but kept going. Sorry to interrupt you there. Yeah, he's still, uh, still going fine. His yeah. car seems to be awfully loose. He's definitely having handling problems. He had dropped back to about 11th position. He was, uh, had some contact with a 41 car, I believe. Let's, let's look at it. Ricky Craven. Yep. Down yeah. on the inside, a little bit of a nudge. And again, Kyle, Whoa. Did a heck of a job of saving it. Touches the wall a little bit. See, Ricky Rudd went by. And ladies and gentlemen, we have completed 106 laps, caution free. That's a surprise. It really is. Here's the leader, Mark Martin, put, trying to put a lap on Ken Schrader with second place Dale Earnhardt just behind. Schrader is in 21st position. Now there are 20 cars on the lead lap. And we saw Kenny Schrader's car, the rear end of his car, Earnhardt goes by. The back of Schrader's car wiggled just a tick. As he went in the corner, that means that most of these guys are fighting a very, very loose race car. This is Ted Musgrave's suspension cam. Remember, the track is cement, concrete. And the black thing in the middle, that yellow thing is the spring, the coil spring that holds the car up. The black thing in the middle of the spring is a rubber that they can take in, take out, to let that spring, uh, to weaken that spring and change the chassis. That hose, you see, the red hose, is a brake dump. It carries air into the brakes and cools them off. He passes the Dick Trickle car, and here's our camera underneath the trickle machine. And you can see just how the right front wheel goes up and down and how much, the can how much camber the wheel has in it. We can see how the wheel is leaned in at the top. Now we're in the corner, so the wheel is, the tire is flat on the racetrack. As it goes down the straight, we see air under the outside of the right rear tire. That's the camber. We finally have a car making a pit stop. Michael Waltrip is in on the back stretch. When Dick Trickle made some contact earlier, we'll watch from this camera as he goes sideways. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, look how he turns that thing to the right. Ooh, <laughs> man. That's a good shot. That's a good shot. Michael Waltrip now coming out of the pits after making a stop on the back stretch, the Pennzoil machine. That's the first car. That's the first car that's been in the pits, isn't it? Yes, it is. And I guess first he was car. so loose that he just couldn't drive it. Yeah, he had already gone a lap down out on the racetrack, and uh, so he fought it as long as he could. He run about 112 laps before he came into the pits. Be interesting to see how far we see others go. As far as gas is concerned, they should be able to go about 160 or so laps. There's the leader, Mark Martin, coming up on Jeff Burton, putting a lap on him. Jeff in 18th position. There's 17 cars now on the lead lap. The next one that uh, may go a lap down is Bobby Hamilton. And we have a old Earnhardt in the wall Martin. hard. He is in the wall hard in turn four. He has really messed up the front end of the GM Goodrich Chevrolet, but able to drive it. Heavy, heavy damage to the left front and the oil cooler back there. If you saw the bush race yesterday, you say, well, they, the oil cooler's in the radiator. That radiator is not legal in Winston Cup. The oil cooler's back there or underneath the radiator. Man, heavy damage to that. And this is exactly what Dale Earnhardt does not need this year if he's going to stay consistent and win that eighth championship. But the caution is out for the first time today, and it comes at the end of 117 laps. Pace car is out to slow the field, and a lot of cars will uh, be very glad that this caution came out because they needed some, uh, <laughs> some adjustments. Yes, they welcomed this opportunity, no doubt about it, to come in and get some new tires on and make some adjustments to the cars. There's still 18 cars on the lead lap. We see the 27 car, 28 car, I'm sorry, of Dale Jarrett. He's worked his way up to sixth spot mm -hmm. from 19th. Not 19th. Yes. Very nice run. Here they come. Mark Mark, Jeff Gordon leading him down the pits here on the front stretch. Here comes John Andretti down off the bank. Rusty Wallace and Dale Earnhardt. Here's John. 
John Kearney. Four tire change for John Andretti. No adjustments. Car just a little bit tight in the middle of the turns. Work is done on the right side. The gasoline going in. They'll come around to the left side now as Tim Brewer supervising. Mark Martin is on the top. Also Jeff Gordon and John Andretti. Rusty Walls has made a change and gone. Now John Andretti is down and away. 18.2 seconds for Jeff Gordon. A much quicker stop than uh, Mark nor Andretti. And the car's coming out of his three abreast as Earnhardt's car is in there. And the crew is looking. Here comes the pace car. I believe that Earnhardt is going to go a lap down. They're taking the car behind the wall. Earnhardt's car going behind the wall. And we'll show you in replay what happened as the three car goes behind the wall for repairs. Here it is. Well, it was already in a spin, Bob, as he came off of turn four. I wondered if he was up on the outside of a car lapping maybe and, and got up in the loose stuff and lost it. Let's watch from the Sitco in-car, Morgan Shepard's in-car, and see if we can see what happened. There he is. That's the 12 car, Derek Colt. Just a little bit of contact between the 12 and the three car. Earnhardt runs down there and cuts in a little bit too quick going into the turn and clips the car of Derek Cope and uh, round he goes. There is the smoking number three machine as it's behind the wall for repairs in the early going of the Food City 500. I am getting an interrupt. If you're trying to talk to me, Neil, I'm I'm getting an interrupt, but I'm not hearing you. Is that the way you guys are? I'm not hearing anything. I'm not hearing anything. <laughs> I'll bet it was. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get Neil back with us. <laughs> well. No, no. <laughs> oh, my key. Yahoo! Thank you. <laughs> Break the tension here a little, huh? Well, I think I'll sit down and relax. <sighs> yeah, well. Okay, now I, I got Neil. Neil. Now I got Neil. <laughs> okay. I've got, I've got Neil now, I believe. <laughs> Thanks for your help. <laughs> <laughs> Under caution for the first time in the Food City 500. We're at 122 laps now. The caution came out on lap 117 because of a wreck in turn four that has damaged heavily the number three car of Dale Earnhardt. <laughs> well, he's a seven-time champion going for number eight. It's things like these that create setbacks. Jerry Punch is with Bobby Labonte. Well, Bobby just climbed out of the car after about 120 laps, and Bobby, a lot longer than you had hoped to run. How do you feel? Well, you know, Bill Earnhardt just uh, didn't ever think he'd run 120 laps here to begin with under green, but... Uh, the interstate batteries car is good. You know, we got boxed in there a couple of times, had to really slow down, and, you know, just three or four or five of the, of the lead cars got us, and, you know, a lot of cars, a few cars are already lapped down, so I think David will do a good job for us, and, uh, you know, I've already got him a fifth of the way there, so he can go the rest of the way. You didn't even lose another lap changing drivers. You lost a lap on the racetrack, but what was worse out there, the, the shoulder or just trying to breathe with the pneumonia? Uh, basically, just trying to breathe was the biggest thing, uh, but, you know, if, I kind of really didn't want to get out of it, but I knew, I knew one fifth was how tough it was on my shoulder and stuff. So I figured the whole way would be along, be pretty tough. So we'll try to get really good for Wilkesboro next weekend and try the whole, the whole distance. That's Bobby Labonte who's climbed out of the car. Now he will stay in the pits and be supportive of David Green and the team. Now while Labonte stays here, not far behind us, the Earnhardt team continues to work, guys, and we are told they're going to replace the tie rod ends, the radiator, and much of the front suspension. So they're going to be back here for an awfully long time. Yes, that smoke that you saw coming from Earnhardt's car was the water. It evidently broke the radiator in the crash, and 
overheated, so they'll have to put a new radiator in it. David Green now in for Bobby Labonte will take the green flag here in 30th position a lap down. Richard Childress in the black coat just walking out of the picture, ready on his orders. Well, now there are 16 cars on the lead lap as we get ready to restart. I said 20 there just as the caution came out, but apparently a couple of the cars that had been lapped were had not shown up yet on the scoring as they came around to get the caution flag. Jeff Gordon, the leader. Jeff Gordon is the leader. Mark Martin second. The crowd rises as the green flag comes back out and the Food City 500 is back under competitive condition. John Andretti is third and Rusty Wallace and Terry Labonte. Terry pitting on the backstretch had a good pit stop back there. Jeff Gordon got quite a start as he has put some space between himself and Mark Martin. Now, a race for, uh, what is that, third spot between, uh, it was a race between Andretti and Rusty Wallace. I thought Rusty was going to get the position because John drifted high in the corner and Rusty got the nose under, but John held him off. The Kmart Little Caesars Pizza Pizza Machine, driven by John Andretti, and now we're in the Miller Genuine Draft Four, driven by Rusty Wallace. Well, the lap cars, of course, were able to go up on the on the inside, and uh, that made it some drivers back in the pack a little bit tough for them here on the restart. There's Terry Labonte has made also a nice move to the front. He's currently in fifth position. And started way back there. Started 21st. He was the fastest second-day qualifier yesterday and had trouble during his uh, initial session on Friday because of the inspection thing. So our sixth-place car, Ricky Rudd, the tied fourth. And 28-car Dale Jarrett is the next car in line, followed by Darrell Walter. D.W. Sterling Marlin is doing a nice job. Yeah, he had a good pit stop as well back there on the back stretch and gained several positions. He had worked himself up to about 10th or 11th before the caution came out and then picked up a few spots during the pit stop. I wonder if the fact that Earnhardt is in the pit area, garage area, working on his car is going to have any kind of uh, psychological advantage for how the four cars going to run their race. Are they going to change their strategy? on how they run the race today, the four car. Oh, and a crash down in one top to nine. And the 23 car is spinning, the 43 car. And the caution flag is out. Second time this afternoon, the caution is out. Both cars, however, able to drive away, but considerable damage to Modine's car. And the 32 car also of Chuck Bound. Yeah, he has a lot of damage on his car, too. And we see saw a lot of fluid come from the 25 car. He drives directly to the garage area. There's Chuck Bound, whose car is smoking, and here is a replay. Yeah, it's difficult to see what happened. Yeah, really, they, they were so bunched up from, from the restart with, with lap cars entwined with those that were on the lead lap and everybody jockeying for position and that position they were jockeying for was the inside of the racetrack. That's right. Bobby Hamilton you saw also spun during that incident and bound like Bodine has taken his car behind the wall. And there's a parts wagon. Well they've got some work to do on Todd's car on Chuck's car and of course Earnhardt's car is still behind the wall for repairs after an earlier crash. It's Jeff Gordon leading the event back after these messages. Have anything from the end cars? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Looks like the 32 ran in the 75. Okay, this is the second round, right? Thank you.
Oh, okay, sure. Remain under caution at Bristol International Raceway in Tennessee, our second of the day because of a three-car crash up in turn number one. Well, there are the transporters that get these cars from race to race, their position in the infield here at Bristol. And that reminds us we've got a little bit of a catching up to do as far as the Mayflower Trucker Challenge is concerned. We're going to go back and see how things went in round number two, which was held earlier this year in Atlanta. Wonderful job. Put it up there like this. David Atkins, who came on strong last year, took the top honors at Daytona in round one. Then on to Atlanta, round number two, here are the finalists. With spring in the air, parody blossomed as Excite's Peter Jellin took to the racetrack. He's sitting 21st in points and is hopeful for his first Mayflower NASCAR Truck Drivers Challenge victory, which has grown increasingly difficult. We have yet to see last year's champion, Rodney Pickler, make it past the qualifying round. As the other competitors and some spectators look on, Jellin made this a very, very good run. He was able to complete the distance without a single penalty. Well, felt great, felt real good. No, no problems, I don't think. After a sixth place finish in Daytona, Pennzoil's Tommy Rigsby pushed his rig hard, careful to stay clear of the penalties. This was Tommy's best run to date. He hopes it'll lead to a victory and a shot at the Mayflower $20,000 bonus. I think that was a pretty good run. It felt pretty good. I just hope it didn't have any penalties. But it would be Peter Jellin taking the top spot for the day, moving him to 11th in points. Tommy Rigsby would have to settle for second, but he has the points lead heading into round number three at Sears Point. We still wait to hear from last year's trio of Pickler, McCrimmon, and Culbertson as they hope to push their way back atop the point standings. So our congratulations to Peter, who drives the rig that hauls this car, and John Kernan has more on the seven car. Bob Jeff Bodine, who's found himself a lap down after that spin earlier, he has pitted one more time during this caution period. It was a lucky break for him. He took on four tires. They thought they had a right rear tire going down. It was just a little bit soft. Now let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch, who's with Richard Childress. Well, the good news is the car is back on the racetrack, and Richard Childress is talking to his driver, and RC, sorry to meet like this, but how bad is the car hurt? Well, you know, it, it knocked everything off the front. It looks like a chassis is pretty decent. You know, we had to straighten a couple of things, but I just told him go out and try to make the best of it we can right now. That's all we can do. Any idea that he's saying anything about what could have happened up there? No, nobody ever said anything. We just seen him spinning. A lot of debris here in the children's pits, and that caution flag was a break for the Earnhardt crew and able to make some repairs and get the car back out without losing a lot of additional laps here under green. So the Earnhardt car is back out on the racetrack, and Bill Weber has an update on the 75 car of Todd Bodine. Bob, Todd is still sitting in the factory stores for They've cut away the front end completely. They've also got heavy rear end damage. They've taped up the spoilers. They won't have any, or the reverse spoiler, rather. They won't have any trouble getting fuel in the car, but he's got heavy rear end damage. He's up on Jack's cut. He's just sitting in the car waiting for his crew to make any repairs they can. One update on Terry Labonte, who's run so well today. He is very unhappy with the set of tires he has on that car. He says his steering radius is off about three inches on this set compared to the last set he had on. They're not going to bring him in until they get a caution or an opportunity later on. They don't want to give up track position, but they're going to try and string the car. They're pretty sure, though, they just got a mismatched set of tires. And Terry Labonte at the moment runs in fifth position. With all the work that occurred on the Earnhardt car, he only lost 20 laps for repairs. It's Jeff Gordon at the front now here in Bristol. I got you, Neil. Talk to me, Neil. Barely. 
I, I got you. I can hear you. Yeah, I can. I can. I can barely hear you, Neil. Chevy, I'm going to see that bill? pit, Brian. There are there are two messages in there, and I hit next. Nothing happened. It erased everything but the one that was and on the fans board. Fans have crowned the most popular NASCAR driver of the year. A record. Not what promo? <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, by the way, by the way, when is the Elliot shop talk? After our on? show today. It is? Yeah. We need to mention that because I had a letter this week. I had a letter, some Elliot fan wanting to know when it was going to be on. It wasn't, I guess, uh, publicized very well last week. We promoted several times yesterday. So oh, did you? Okay, yeah. good. Good. <laughs> Probably not. Do both jobs. Why do we need Neil? under green after our second caution period of the day Jeff Gordon has the advantage over Mark Martin John Andretti Rusty Wallace and Terry Labonte between Gordon and Wallace uh, Martin first and second is the 12 car Derek Cope he however is a lap down in 16 and once again on the start Jeff Gordon jumped out to a good lead uh, however Mark Martin was on the outside of Derek Cope and had to to uh, deal with that on the first lap and coach of course on the inside got the position but it's not for position on the race but it's position out on the track but not uh, hope is running in 16th position one lap down would you guys agree with me that if there has been a surprise as far as first year teams is concerned it's john and ready he's doing very very well particularly here today at bristol this is a very tough racetrack very demanding racetrack and he is doing a great job in that Kmart car. He is 10th in points going into this event. One thing we will keep our eye on, of course, here this afternoon, because Bernhardt was involved in a crash, lost so many laps, and Sterling Marlin at the moment is ninth. We'll keep our eye on uh, the point situation. Jerry Punch has... Oh! David Green crashes down in turn one. Heavy damage to the rear of the interstate battery car. Dalton is out. So after going over 100 laps without caution, we've had three pretty close together here. David Green substituting for Bobby Labonte into the fence in turn one with heavy rear end damage. There you see it on the left rear of the car. Yeah, that is heavy damage. Too bad, Dave. He really practiced that car. He qualified it well in fifth place. He practiced well with it yesterday afternoon and was looking forward to a good run here today. Even though Bobby had lost a lap, got caught up behind traffic there early in the race, and had lost a lap. They're still in good shape for a good finish. Makes it around to the pit area. Here's the tail end of it, already into the wall when we picked it up. Here's Jerry in the pits. Well, the Interstate Battery Chevrolet comes in and has been considerably shortened. As you said, Dan, they were very pleased with what had happened yesterday in practice. They said that David Green's laps has gotten very consistent. He was running with Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon and some of the others very consistently, but apparently he had trouble, and they are looking as they have the car up on the jack, surveying beneath it. Jimmy Maycar looked and said apparently they're going to have to go back behind the wall and do some repairs. The entire back clip has been pushed down and some of the sheet metal has been pushed against the left rear tire and also the question is the fuel cell it looks look like it's partially been disconnected from its mount so the car has some significant structural damage in the rear and they bring him back behind the wall for repairs Bob once again we'll take a look at what happened up in turn number one that sent David Green substituting for the injured Bobby Labonte up into the wall. There it is, contact with the left rear of the car. He's behind the wall. We're under caution for the third time, but we will resume 
in just a moment. Man, guys are something. Ooh. All the freeze there when the caution yeah. flag was just yeah. Neil, that's you? over perfectly. Neil, I got you now. Go ahead. No, I didn't hear you say anything. As long as we're not talking, Neil, I can barely hear you. But when we start talking on program, I don't hear If you're talking to me, I don't hear a thing. I can barely hear Chevy. She's a lot louder than you as far as this level. We talking about the three car here? Three car. The crown the most popular huh? NASCAR driver of the year. Okay. He's known as Awesome Bill from Dawsonville, and the man fans have crowned the most popular NASCAR driver of the year a record nine times. He's Bill Elliott, and this year he returns home to Dawsonville and starts out on a new high as the pilot of the McDonald's Ford and the owner of his own team. They tell you to do that for your back? Yep. Okay, good. at Bristol and we had hoped to run this shop talk last week after Darlington we ran over so much we postponed it until right after our race this afternoon had a letter from a Bill Elliott fan earlier this week saying when's it going to be on it's going to be on right after our race here this afternoon ma'am so stay tuned by the way your driver Bill Elliott is 21st a lap down here's the green Once again, Gordon gets that good jump because he's on the inside, or gets on the gets ahead of the car that's on the inside, which is Derek Coke. That Coke car is uh, pretty darn going strong right now as he closes up on the back bumper of the 24 car. Remember, it was in the early going, and then as we got some laps on the car and went away, but it's doing fine now again. One of our people said that uh, Monkton baby green, and he said he was bumped. Bumped by Dave Marcus is what caused the crash. Looks like a white car that uh, bumped because of that interference. Dave's car is pretty quiet here today. Mark Mark in second place. He was a pole sitter eligible for $30,400 of Unical bonus money should he win this race. He's running second at the moment. We're on top of the Valvoline Ford. Here is eight. Ninth and tenth position. That's Daryl Walters, Sterling Marlin, and Ted Musgrave. We look at the window of Ted Musgrave's family channel forward. There's another Napa field summary for you. You'll want to see where your favorite driver is at the moment. And you will notice that there are 15 cars on the lead lap. Spencer back in the 23rd, one lap down. He was involved in that spin in 3275 and evidently didn't have a great deal of damage. But Benny, you'll notice that a while ago, Dale Earnhardt was at the bottom of the standings, but now, because of some other crashes and because he is out there picking up laps, he is moved to 34th. And every point is very, very important. That's six points that he's picked up. He did not lead the race, did he? And he never did get no, to the front, did he? Never, never did get that five bonus points. John Andretti goes to the inside of Gary Cope. Cope, remember, is a lap car, but Andretti and Wallace are battling for the third position. Shot of Rusty Wallace. He goes down in turn one. He's been battling John Andretti quite a bit here today. Andretti's doing a great job. He's making her hanging on to third. Tim Brewer, the crew chief on the 37 car, a longtime crew chief for Junior Johnson, when he had so much success here, he knows how to set up a car for this speedway. 
there you can see that the difference between first and second eight tenths of a second and 2.6 separate one through five with more on John Andretti here's Dr. Punch. Well as Benny mentioned Tim Brewer is the crew chief and Tim and John came here to test for two days after Atlanta the Wednesday and Thursday after Atlanta the test really wasn't that beneficial they really didn't know what they had learned because both Andretti and Brewer had the flu and they couldn't run that many laps consecutively and Tim said we won't know until the race starts if what we learn will help us but Andretti was the other driver I told you Kyle Petty went to a different gear this morning Andretti also has the 543 gear in so he is turning a lot of RPMs but apparently it's helping them off the corner. Bob? He is staying ahead of Rusty Wallace in third. Wallace sneaks up at him at the uh, exit of turn number two. Good battle here for third and fourth, but there's also a battle shaping up for the lead. Oh, and into turn number one, it is Mark Martin passing Jeff Gordon and going back to the front. Wow. It just seemed like a lap ago that Martin was five or six car lengths behind. Mark Martin has four top tens in the first five events of 1995. Here's how he went to the lead. This is coming off turn four to the front straightaway. As they come down, Mark gets a great run, gets position on Jeff Gordon, and why is the Jeff Gordon decided not to come down? Yeah, and he had been gaining about three car lengths uh, each lap, and so Gordon had to see him coming and knew that he had a lot of momentum. Back to this battle for third spot between Andretti and Rusty Wallace. And don't forget about Terry Labonte because eh. yes. <laughs> he's right there. Oh. Trust me, there he is. There he is. He's gaining on this two cars, I do believe. Yes, he definitely is, Benny. He was uh, a minute ago. He's about a half a straightaway behind him. Maybe a little more than a minute ago. About eight or ten laps ago, he was about a half a straightaway, but he's gained up. He's pulled up on him. Once again, we have a three-car tussle between, or among, I should say, Waltrip. Yeah, make it a four-car battle. You know, yeah. Waltrip is called Ricky Rudd. He is running in the seventh position. Ted Musgrave is watching. Right on the bottom of the racetrack. Drew still hasn't moved up any at all as we see going in the corner. Left wheel touching that yellow line, coming off the corner. Once again, the wheel touching that yellow line, staying as close to the bottom as they possibly can. They will let it drift up in the middle, just a tick. About that much, yeah, just small. Yeah, small yeah. Amount. Not Maybe not quite that much. But. The car, by the way, at the end of this line is Dave Marcus. He is a lap down in 20th position. The others are battling for position. John Kernan has a comment on the number 10 car. John Well, Bob, as we see, Bristol can tear up a lot of race cars. And Ricky Rudd's crew decided to, to bring a sacrificial lamb, if you will, the oldest car in their shop they brought to Bristol. Well, yesterday afternoon, when Jeff Bodine lost an oil line, Ricky got into the oil, scraped the wall. They didn't do a whole lot of damage other than sheet metal damage. Bill Ingle told me this morning that actually, after he scraped the wall, they brought it in and straightened the sheet metal out. The car was running better than it did before. Sometimes that happens. <laughs> yeah. You don't know why, but it, sometimes it, it just happens that uh, some little something that you were lacking maybe gets knocked into the right position. Makes the car go faster. Happened to me at Dover, Delaware one time. I just had an average car. I was involved in a crash, and I bent the fender, the hood and the right front fender all up, and from then on, the car just flew. Huh. Did you win the race? Yeah. Good for you. I mean, I don't know what, what it was. Maybe it was an aerodynamic advantage. I had a, all that dead sheet metal push the nose down or what, but... Uh, Jeff Burton, we understand, uh, is reporting to his pit crew that he may have a tire going down. He's a lap down in 25th position. Just ahead of him is Michael Walter, who is five laps down in 32nd. And Jeff Burton in practice yesterday was one of the fastest cars here. He, but I talked to the crew this morning. They said the car was extremely loose. It turned very good in the corner, but it was loose. And now the car, they say, is pushing badly, so that is indicative of a flat tire or at least a low tire. A low tire. It doesn't take many pounds of pressure that you lose to pick up the 
type situation. That means when you go into the corner that it just simply don't turn the way you want it to. Sometimes you have to back off the gas coming off the turn. Just behind those cars, the leader of the race, Mark Martin, with about a five or six car length advantage on second place. Make that an eight or nine car length advantage on second place, Jeff Ford. 185 laps out of 500 completed here at Bristol. And we'll look at the in cars as we go to break. There's Rusty Wallace in fourth. Ken Schrader is in 17th. Dick Trickle runs in 19th position. Ted Musgrave is on the lead lap in 10th. And there is Morgan Shepard who is in 28. We'll be right back. Biddle Millmores, huh? Bush, Mac, Okay, what do you got? Bush, McDonald's, and year in review, right? Hello. Audio one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I hear you fine right now, Neil. I can barely hear myself, but I hear you. Talk to me, Neil. What? To get Bob to talk while you're talking, it's not to hear you. Uh, hello. Uh, hello, Jerry. This is Bob talking, and this is the way I'm going to be talking. Can you hear me when Neil throws it to you down in the pit area? Yeah, it's better, Neil. Better than it was. Okay. Okay. Talk to me, Neil. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yep, sure do. I'm so I'm so afraid I'm going to lose you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> ESPN Speed World coverage of the Food City 500 is being brought to you by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Bush, the official beer of NASCAR. By McDonald's, have you had your break today? And by NASCAR 94 Year in Review. To order, call 871 NASCAR. The Family Channel Blimp is currently in the area, part of its 95 nationwide tour dedicated to promoting the power of family by using the blimp to support charitable organizations involved with the special needs of children and families. So they're doing two services here. They're providing great shots from overhead, and they're making money for charity. Well, here's the leader, Mark Martin. Coming up on Lake Speed, who is currently two laps down in 29th position. Based on this band for it. And not far to get there at the one car of Rick Mast. He is in the lead lap in 15th position. He was about to go a lap down earlier on the long green flag run, but he managed to stay out there and stay on the lead lap, and so he's trying to do that right now. That's Steve Grissom in the black and gold 29, the Meineke car trying to get by the one car. Steve Grissom, the winner yesterday of the Goodies 250 here at the Bush Grand National Race held yesterday afternoon. Beat this fellow, as a matter of fact. Mark Martin finished second, and Grissom yep. was first. 6.6 6 seconds separates the first five here at Bristol with almost 200 laps gone. Grissom moving to the inside of Rick Mast, and now Mark Martin trying to move to the inside. We'll lock her down here for a lap, and you can look for your favorite driver and his car, and you can see where he is in relation to the leader of the race and who he's battling with out there on the track. The Kyle Petty going by the 16th car, taking that spot away, or trying to take that spot away. That's Camp and Yep. Back to the leader, there's Mark Martin. Now we'll focus in on Kyle Petty and Greg Sachs. Randy LaJoy running in this group. So is Ted Musgrave. And Kyle did take that spot away from Musgrave. It's Kyle up in the 10th spot. Here's a Fran Field summary. Now 
has 14 cars on the lead lap. Pretty impressive. Couple of rookies, Robert Presley and Ricky Craven, both still in the lead lap. Mm -hmm. Andy LaJoy is on top of the standings for Rookie of the Year after five events. And that goes all the way down to 23rd before we see cars that are two laps or more down. And there you can see Dale Earnhardt is running in 33rd position, 20 laps down because of the crash earlier in the race and the time that he spent behind the wall for repairs. Sterling Marlin and Darrell Waldrop have been run together for a lot of laps. They're now eight and nine. I think Sterling is maybe getting better. Yeah, yeah. Sterling was following Darrell the last time we saw him, and he has uh, been able to get around him. Two sent Tennessee natives. Well, Darrell maybe not a native, but Tennessee was born in Kentucky, right? Goldsburg, but he lives in Tennessee now. Has for a long, long time. And you know, he said one of the reasons why he likes this racetrack so much and one of the reasons why he's won 12 events here is because it resembles so much a track that he used to run on down in southern Indiana at Salem in his late model days before he moved to the NASCAR Winston Cup Series. Ricky Craven and Bobby Hamilton are running together. It's not for position. The 41 car is in the lead lap. 43 is one down. There's Bill Elliott. A couple of laps down the McDonald's Ford. And meanwhile, right behind them is once again the 29 car, a lap down, and the leader of the race, the six car of Mark Martin and Jeff Gordon. While Mark has caught this traffic and trying to figure out how to get by it, Jeff Gordon, the second place car, the DuPont car, has caught him. And Jeff is saying, Okay, I caught this traffic the first 75 laps, it's your turn to fight this traffic. It gets tough when you come up on cars that are running good. Maybe they might be two tenths of a second to lap slower, but it's hard to pass them. Dale Jarrett is having a good run. He's in six final. And Bill Weber has more on Dale's run. Bill? Well, the final practice last night, they threw everything at this car. Shocks, they worked on the track bar. Larry McReynolds and Dale Jarrett had long conversations. And then this morning, they changed the header link. They felt that would give them more top end. They were having trouble spinning the tires. They felt that would take care of it. Larry McReynolds just told Dale Jarrett he's running very consistent laps. They're really pleased with his progress. Of course, he's pitted back here on the back stretch, along with Terry Labonte, who's also having a good run. He started 21st. Gary Dehart just gave me the thumbs up on the Kellogg's Chevrolet. By the way, they wanted long green flag runs for that five car today. The longer the green, the longer the run, the better the car, and Terry's coming. And we have Sterling Marlin, who's also coming at a crash in turn four. Right in front of the leaders, it's Dave Marcus, but the leaders were able to go by on the inside. Dave stays up against the wall in the terabyte car. So that long green flag that Bill Weber was just talking about, but it went out the window right there. Our fourth caution of the day comes out on lap 215. I see some pretty heavy damage to our lot of tire marks on the right rear of Bill Elliott's car. I don't know if that means anything or, or that was some earlier. Okay, here we go. The first three coming into the pits. And here is Mark Martin, Jeff Gordon, and John Andretti coming in for pit stops. Here's John Vernon in Andretti's pit. It'll be a four tire change. John's still playing the car just a little bit tight in the middle of the turns. So let's go down to Mark Martin's pit and Jerry Bunch. Right side tires already on, left side going on now. They got all the low dust all the second can of fuel in. He's off the jacket away as Mark Martin is down. Here is Jeff Gordon down here as Russell Wallace down. And the 37 of John Andretti is now moving down pit road. Let's go to Bill Weber in the back pit. Dale Jarrett and Terry Labonte are back here. Four tires and fuel looking to beat the leaders. Mark Martin goes by, the 24 is by, the 2 goes by. Now the 28 is down here. Great long stop for Terry Labonte. They're working on the left side tires. Now Terry pulls away from the 28 pit, but he lost some valuable positions pitting back here. Sterling Marlin, the last car of the leaders off the backstretch pits. And Dale Jarrett picked up two positions back there pitting on the backstretch. He came out ahead of uh, John and Reddy and of uh, Terry Labonte, who was in front of him. Of course, Terry was pitting on the back stretch, too, so he only beat one car that's pitting on the front stretch. And the 40 car, Greg Sachs, is nearly stopped here on the main straightaway. 
We will take a break here. Apparently the battery has gone sour on the Kindle car. We'll check out that story in just a moment. Meanwhile, we'll take a break and be back with more from Bristol. Well, they, they had trouble that 37, John. Did uh, they work on something or just uh, what's the story? I, I I'm still waiting to find out from Tim Brewer exactly what happened. I'm looking at the replay right now. There. Hey, Tim. Lynn, come out here. Now I want you to look at this. It says three unread messages, right? I'm supposed to be able to, to go through them and look at which one I want. It doesn't change, but instead it goes to two. Now it'll go to one. Now you guys have seen that with your own eyes, right? Huh? No, it's... A... for you and Gerard do we have anything have baseball tonight but we do have something very very exciting for America's Cup team Dennis Connor goes against the mighty Mary and again if Dennis loses tonight it'll be the first time he's ever been out of the America's Cup this early our same day's coverage is at 8:30 Eastern time tonight from San Diego America's Cup here on ESPN well we got some replays to show you guys Ned take a look at uh Dave Marcus, what happens? Looked like he got bumped in the rear there as he came off of turn four up to the outside. And he stays up against the wall. There's the leader, Mark Martin, and Jeff Gordon in second place comes shooting by down on the inside. Here we see we're in car inside the six car, the Mark Martin Valvoline Ford. And the 71 car goes around into the wall with the left side. Just ahead of Mark Martin, the leader, and Jeff Gordon. Still under caution, 220 laps completed. We'll be right back. Hasn't deleted. There we go. Now it, I think it was working at the very front of the race because I, I did thumb through some. Okay. We faxed it and it worked fine.
back to Bristol. Now there's a shot for you. This is under Dick Trickle's car. Wow. Who do you have contact with? Oh, he got close. I guess it's Brett Bodine who was on the outside of him. Meanwhile, that's Robert Preston. There he is. Well, he touched again, didn't he? Presley directly in front of him. Here comes Brett again, again. And they touch again. How the woman keeps from crashing. <laughs> now Brett drifts back a little bit. Now he runs alongside of Ken Schrader. That's what we talk about when we think of Bristol and the short tracks. We see Kyle Petty once again, who led the race earlier on, and shown a lot of strength today in that. Coors Light car. Onion. By the way, Jeff Gordon is the leader of the race. On the restart, Derry Cope got to the inside and held the position, got the lap back, and Jeff Gordon came also along and took the lead from uh, from Mark Martin. But now, as you can see, Cope is going a lap down once again. And Rusty Wallace's car is pretty good right now. His car has been good on fresh tires. It loses a little bit as the tires get hot. That trend continues, or if they've adjusted on the car, and have it right. I bet they make some adjustments on the either the pressure, air pressure, or on the wedge bolts on the car. As you said, he has been good on fresh tires, but as they ran on a while, we don't see John Andretti. We've seen him with the two car all day long. He's back. There he is, back there. Racing with the 10 car, Ricky Rudd for fifth spot. Yeah, Dale Jarrett, uh, as Ned indicated, got off the back stretch pit a little uh, quicker than John Andretti was able to come around. So Dale Jarrett is in fourth, Andretti is in fifth, and Ricky Rudd in sixth. There's some trouble on the right side. The crew has some trouble on the right side of the 37 car. That's how he lost the spots, and he's back in traffic now. And as we've uh, Traffic is a problem at Bristol. It really is. And on Dale Jarrett's behalf, on the race car, he got really got jammed up uh, with uh, Jeff Bodine and Jeff Burton and lost a lot of space to the leaders. There's Terry Labonte at the end of the line. He is in uh, seventh position. Labonte, by the way, won the first short track race of the year. If you divide the tracks according to super speedways and short tracks, then this is the short, second short track race of the year. When you divide them into medium-sized track and put Richmond in the medium-sized track category, then this is the first short track race of the year. In any case, Terry won it. Three-quarter mile track. Yes. Less, Less than a mile. mile. Yeah. And oh. Mark Martin has caught uh, Gordon. Jeff Gordon and pulls alongside. Yeah, he'll get him going into turn three. Jeff will back off and let him go. Wasn't about to go in there on the outside. And here's a battle between Ricky Craven and Kyle Petty for 11. Kyle gets the position. And here comes Ken Schrader in the bud car, but he's a lap down. Yes. Schrader in 18th position. 14 cars on the lead line. Average speed of the race at this point is 91.955 miles an hour. Now the 25 and the 15 are racing for position. And of course, is uh, Ken Schrader and the 15 car of Dick Trick. They're both a lap down, but they're battling for the 18 spot. And they have the Kodiak car sandwiched between them that is in the lead lap. Mark Martin up front has led 94 of the first 237 laps. behind Brett Bodine. Sterling is in 14th. And we have a switch of position here as Labonte passes Rudd and goes to 6th. Let me see. 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th. Darrell is in the 8th spot. Musgrave is in 9th. Glad to see Darrell doing well in that Western Auto Chevrolet because I went by there the other day and Pete Peterson, Pete Wright, maybe help him put the engine in the car. So it's good to see Still do it. Did you uh, wow. get a free lunch out of the deal? No. Oh, no. terrible. Yeah. I'm glad the engine had dropped out on the back. So am I, man. Me too, man. <laughs> no, Benny knows what he's doing. <laughs> they didn't have to get up under the car anyway, but he didn't get the top. Oh, no, he yeah. just lifted it into position. <laughs> I tried to get between the fender and the and the roll bar, but I had a little trouble with that. Well, how come? My midsection got in the way. <laughs> Oh, my God.
Musgrave closes it on the back bumper of Walchick in the 17 car. Jack Roush cars, two of them in the top ten. Both of them are in the top ten. Michael Walter, by the way, has pulled off the racetrack again. He was back in 29. As we watch this, I'll tell you that David Green is uh, pulling the interstate battery star back on the racetrack after spending a long time, about 90 laps in for damage. Yeah, he's being shown in the last position right now. Not running very fast, but he's out there. Well, he's going to get an open spot on the track where there's not a lot of traffic. He can get up there on the groove and see how it feels. There is Earnhardt, and he's now up to 30th position. Hey, he's passing. Look at that. Yeah, he's going pretty good. Since he came back out, he has stayed uh, on the same lap. He's still just 20 laps down where he was when he came back out on the track. Now, somehow, I think your aerodynamic argument goes out the window. <laughs> right there. I tell you what, that car is not very aerodynamic. It looks like a boat <laughs> running around the racetrack. Watch that. But again, he's up to 30th position, so he has picked up six spots since he came back down on the racetrack. That's 18 points. Yep. And boy, you never know how much that might mean at the end of the year. And he's going by Darrell, and that lets Musgrave get on the inside. That's for position. Position eight, Musgrave has it. If points were awarded now, Earnhardt would retain the points lead by 13. Until just a few minutes ago, Sterling Marlin was in the points lead if points were awarded him. So it pays to stay out there, and we are approaching the halfway point, aren't we? Yep. Next time by. Right here. Right there. There it is. Yep. And cross flags being shown by Joe Moore, and Mark Martin is leading at the halfway point. 250 down, 250 to go. Isn't there a prize now for leading at the halfway point net each and every race? $10,000. Oh, he's won 10 grand? Yeah, yeah somewhat. Man, oh, man. Who's paying that? Catering. Catering. Yep. John Kernan has a story on Rusty Wallace running third. These guys for Rusty Wallace leave no stone unturned. This is the right front tire that came off the car after the pit stop. Look at it. No, that's not what happened onto the tire on the track. That's what happened after it got back here. They cut it away so they could get a look at the sidewall to check out the damage. A lot of damage to the right front sidewall here, in particular in the shoulder area. They want to see if it's flexing too much and causing a breakage inside here. But as you can look all the way around this tire, and it's also on the other side, Tire looks really good. They tell me they don't have any problems with uh, these tires as far as breaking the inside around the shoulder area. So they feel like they're in pretty good shape. What happens when they underinflate the tires, they break the shoulder like John Kernan was talking about. So that's an indication. That gives the crews an indication whether or not they can have to up the air pressure or they can let it down some more. That's what they're doing, cutting the tire apart so they can see. And we see Musgrave going by Labonte. And also Kyle Petty has worked his way back up there. Yeah, Ricky Rudd going by. Darrell Walter will go by. A lot of cars there in the lead lap. And the 33 car of Robert Preston goes by as well. So once Rick Terry Labonte got up in that outside groove, boy, the train went right on by. <laughs> by the way, speaking of Goodyear, this will be their 1,000th documented win in NASCAR Winston Cup competition here this afternoon. Ooh, look at uh, Presley coming up on Waldrop and uh, getting on the brakes. Now, oh! Dick Trickle almost speed does crash. Dick Trickle has spun. And the Brandon 22 LaJoy. car, Brandon LaJoy, has crashed. And the number one car of Mast hits Trickle in the backstretch. There's Trickle's disabled mount off of turn two. Five cautions have now waved over Bristol. To Dick Trickle is the victim. See the left front tire is flat on the 15 car. We can see where he did the donut and landed in that spot. Man. Tell you what, when the wheel is bent like that, like it is on the 15 car, normally there's some pretty heavy damage to that car. Yeah, they'll have to replace some steering parts and who knows what else. Here's a replay. Originally contact between uh, Presley and Schrader. Yep. And then back behind, there's Trickle spinning around. And then we see the 22 car, Randy LaJoy, up high. 
And I guess that was another chain reaction type deal. Those cars behind started jamming on brakes. Here we see Dick Trickle and the four car of Sterling Marlin. And Sterling Marlin taps Dick Trickle, headed into the turn, just enough to get him out of control. Trickle goes up, spins. Now, who's going to hit him in the left front and do all this damage? The 29 car of Grissom goes along, hits him in the left front, does all that damage. And meanwhile, I guess the 22 car, once again, was trying to slow down to avoid the accident. And now someone, ooh, there's some contact between uh, Trickle and Mast. Took the rear bumper off Mast's car. And they've closed. Now the pit road is open. Here's Jerry Punch. Well, they were going to momentarily close pit road to allow the blowers to come out on the track and blow some of the rubber off. The drivers had complained and said, please, during a caution flag, please blow off the track, particularly at the exit of turn two and the exit of turn four. Now the cars on the lead pit are going to come down as you're watching Mark Martin. Triple flip, pit stop here on your screen. Mark Martin, our leader, getting right side and left side tires. Let's go to John Kernan. Rusty Wallace's crew putting on the left side tires. They've taken a round of wedge out of the car to loosen it up. Flutting us tight with Rusty Wallace. He's down and away a really fast pit stop. And he's going to win the race out of the pits. Here's Bill Weber in the back pit. Once again, Dale Jarrett and Terry Labonte looking at a four tire change back here, watching for the leaders. Rusty Wallace goes by as they work on the left side of the Haviland Ford. It's away. It might have been the 24 and the 6. Now they're still working on the left rear of Terry Labonte's car. Sterling Marlin down the pit road. The Kodak Chevy meets the Kellogg Chevy. And they return to the track. One quick story on Sterling Marlin. The reason he was back there fired in traffic was because during the last caution flag stops, they failed to clean the windshield. Sterling was very unhappy. He had to come back in clean the windshield, and that's what put him back in traffic after he'd been running so well. And no crewman wants to listen to an unhappy <laughs> driver. <laughs> Trust irritated me. race driver. Trust me. <laughs> well, Dick Trickle's car is on the hook. He is still in it, and now we go inside, actually on top of it, to see what happened when Dick got in trouble in turn one. He got caught just a little bit, and boy, you can see it. going to get hit again. Well, he did. Rick Mass uh, hit him just slightly. Well, the 15 car goes behind the wall for repairs. We've seen that scenario several times this afternoon, and the track crew comes out to clean up Bristol International Raceway. <laughs> What is? You're here to see a great race, best seat in the house. What a good one. That's because you guys don't do any work. You leave all the work to old Bob. You're doing good. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get a compliment out of this somehow. <laughs> He's known as Awesome Bill from Dawsonville, and the man fans have crowned the most popular NASCAR driver of the year a record nine times. He's Bill Elliott. And this year, he returns home to Dawsonville and starts out on a new high as the pilot. But I the don't McDonald's want to dump Ford any of them. That's the, the point. Own team. If there are this five messages in there, and today, and he's one of them is about on somebody that I want to talk Shop about, I don't want it. I want to thumb through all of them before I delete any of them. I'm sick of you talking about it in computers. Man, what do we need? They'll never replace humans. That's right. right. When we got a good race, what do we need? To look That's right. By golly. <laughs> Brian Herda, huh? What happened? Boy, he won the pole for Phoenix. Are we going <laughs> to. Speaking of computers, <laughs> are we doing the uh, Phoenix thing? Very well. Okay. Mm. Okay. Wake me up when you get one to go. He's known as Awesome Bill from Dawsonville, and the man fans have crowned the most popular NASCAR driver of the year a record nine times. He's Bill Elliott. 
and this year he returns home to Dawsonville and starts out on a new high as the pilot of the McDonald's Ford and the owner of his own team. This could be his year, and today he's our guest on NASCAR Shop Talk. That will be immediately following our live coverage of the Food City 500. Bill Weber is with Dick Trickle. And Dick, you're okay, not very happy what happened. Well, you know, we uh, first set of tires, we just were off, but we got real good the second set. The last set, we got loose going in, and uh, we're just waiting for the next yellow to come out, but everybody's a little rambunctious back there. We got a tap in the back coming in the water. And, you know, we're, we're hoping to bring the car around through the day and you know, get a good finish on it, but, you know, Bud Moore and Donnie Wingo and this team, you know, they'll get me back out there. We'll try to finish with some points, but disappointing day for us. Uh, just got a little, little extra help in the back. Couldn't hold on. Dick Trickle's going to look at his car. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch, an update on the six car. If you're wondering why Mark Martin lost the lead in the pit, take a look at his left front fender. Now, he had some contact with the car during one of the earlier caution flags and pushed the left front fender in. When they came down pit road, Steve Mill, who changes the left front tire, had trouble getting the tire on. He had to have Mark, tell Mark on the radio to turn the steering wheel to the right side, and they were able to wedge the left front tire in. That wedging of the tire cost them an extra three and a half or four seconds in the pits and also cost them the lead. Bob? Yeah, it sure did. Rusty Wallace is now in the lead. Let's show you the pit summary. Mark Martin lost one position. Jeff Gordon lost one. Rusty Wallace gained two. Dale Jarrett lost one, and John Andretti gained one position. The difference is Andretti's pitting in the front, and Jarrett is pitting in the back. That's great. Still under caution, the cleanup continues down in turn number one, where Dick Trickle was involved in the incident. So we'll take another break and be back with more from Bristol, Tennessee. That 37. Car. I know that. Is that right? Yeah, if that white line is the indicator. If that's what they used, he was he was far in front of him. In fact, he almost beat the 24. I know it. And I don't. I don't. I guess that. the powers that be saw it differently. No kidding. Whew. <clears throat> I know. Well, we may be done in two hours. Oh, no, that's only an hour, isn't it? I'm still on central time. Three, four, I, one. Well, Three I, do, four I don't eight. change to, cent, to just daylight time, Benny, as you gay who's in the East Coast. And, and I live in real It says 4 p.m. ET, ET, Eastern Time. <clears throat> but I looked at my watch and it says 10 till 2. So, well, I mean, I, you know, I generally put my watch on whatever locality I'm visiting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I just have to keep moving it back and forth. So. And I have this real cheap watch that you might stem might fall off on. That's right. Welcome back to Bristol in some NASCAR Winston Cup stock car racing on ABC at 4 o'clock. The IndyCar Phoenix 200 will be held and quite a surprise on the pole. Brian Herta with the Chip Ganassi's team is on the pole with Emerson Fittipaldi, Jacques Villeneuve, Paul Tracy, and Michael Andretti making up the top five. The race will be on at 4 o'clock Eastern time. Well, there are the loyal Bristol race fans, the most enthusiastic of any place I think we go. Man, what a crowd of folks we have here today as we see the Bram field summary. While we're watching that, an interesting statistic has popped up. When we're talking about the modern era and drivers' performances at Bristol International Raceway, you got it? Yeah. You normally think of who? Mike, uh, whether uh, Daryl Waltrip is probably yeah. having the best overall finishes. Right. Well, who has the best? Daryl Waltrip is second in terms of overall finishes here at Bristol. Who has the best in 24 races? Rusty. Benny Parsons. You're kidding! Well, how about that? You have a 7.5 finishing average. Daryl has a 7.6, and Earnhardt is 7.7 in the modern era. You mean I beat Daryl Waltrip and Earnhardt at some? How about that? <laughs> Man. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Still under caution, it's Rusty Wallace, Mark Martin, Jeff Gordon, the top three at Bristol. Stay with us. Uh, 
I'm impressed. How about that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> it, it had been a 7.9 now. <laughs> and then an 8.3 and an. How much damage you did the 29 car? Huh? Blimp pop. Okay. Where's the 29? There he is. There he is. Okay. Looks like he hit it with the roll bars, the right roll bars. Got some bungee cords holding bungee cords holding the door on. Looks like. Not very aerodynamic. Did we establish why the, the long caution? No, I mean, we. I think we did, but uh, we need to probably do it again. Yeah. You sound like you know, Ned. <laughs> It's the Food City 500 sixth race of the 1995 NASCAR Winston Cup Series live from Bristol Tennessee overhead is the family channel blip. This is one of a few light ships. This thing is internally lighted at night and man is it pretty. Anyway it is 132 feet in length 44 feet in height 37 feet wide and almost 3000 pounds it reaches a top speed of 56 miles an hour. Now let's go to the Bud race recap. At the moment, Rusty Wallace is the leader. He has only, however, led 11 of the first 271 laps. We've had eight lead changes, five cautions, totaling 45 laps, and an average speed way down to 88 miles an hour. Those that have picked up five bonus points for leading include Mark Gordon, Petty, and the current leader, Wallace. Out of race. Not too many. Greg Sachs and Dave Marcus are the only ones officially out of competition, but there are still some cars that sit behind the wall getting work done. Well, Ned, it's been a rather lengthy caution period here. Yeah, and this is the reason the drivers asked NASCAR to ask the track officials to bring the blowers out and blow some of the rubber down off the track because they say if you get out of the groove, that you're history. And uh, so they have two blowers out there, and they've made uh, a complete lap around this track, one on one end and one on the other. So it looks like they're getting pretty good shape. Kyle Petty is back up to seventh position, Jerry. They've been, they've been battling, the car has been awfully tight, Bob. They took a rubber out of the right front. The car was still too tight to put a rubber in the right rear. And the car got too loose. They just came in and put a round of in the car and put four tires on it. And Kyle said, hey, I think we're in good shape right now. We should be able to make our move back toward the front after qualifying third. Bob? All right, we're just about to go back to green. Rusty Wallace will be at the front of the field. We mentioned that Terry Labonte won the race in Richmond, but Wallace led 248 of the 400 laps, 62% at Richmond in the first short track race of the year. The crowd once again rises as the green flies. And the scramble begins as they're starting to do the brand, which is the way they restart the races. Laps before you get up on that outside, which the lead cars are, it makes it tough. Oh, and Kyle Petty bangs the wall. Several others scramble and lose control, but gather it in, and once again, the caution flies. That all started and fire momentarily on Kyle's car, but it, but it got out. Brett Bodine is smoking heavily. Yeah, Brett has come. hit something pretty hard. He spins off the turn two over there. Just yeah, the 11 car just spun coming off corner number two after going down into one with a lot of smoke coming from the car. I think we'll see on the replay that what happened, Dale Jarrett got on the inside going into turn three over there on the inside of John and Reddy. John went very high. What's what's this all about here? That's just a raw fuel when he tries to restart the car. He opens the carburetor. Uh, we understand that the oil cooler has uh, and split in the 11 car. That's we see the trained. damage to the left front of the car. As the car started stopping, evidently Brett ran in the back of someone and knocked the oil cooler off of it. 
brings the junior Johnson car in. Here's a replay now. There you can see, Ned. That's right. Yeah, Dale had already passed John and Randy. John went high, and I'm sure Kyle probably tried to get to the inside or either jammed his brakes on, and somebody ran into him, and up into the wall he went. And from the Family Channel blimp. Here you can see Andretti moving high. Yep, Jeff Burton. Eight car Jeff Burton catches Kyle in the left rear, and Kyle hits it with the rear and slams it hard with the right front. And uh, see lots of cars back there really doing scrambling around. Now, how about the 11 car, Brett Bodine? There he is trailing smoke. This is in turn one as he takes it into two, he spins. Yes, he's trying yeah. to get to the pits. Yeah. But I, I believe that he had had some contact with someone or the wall back up there trying to get slowed down when Kyle Petty hit the wall. Well, he goes behind the wall for repairs. Lowe's Ford will need some work. Let's see what we can see from the family channel car. There's the eight. Of Jeff Burton goes up, taps Kyle. Petty had such a good beginning to this race. He led early on, but uh, has a contact with the wall. He's dropped him back to 20th position. Dale Earnhardt is up there third in line behind the pace car. He officially on the uh, serial scoring is in 30th position, 20 laps down. And he earlier made some contact with another car and hit the wall almost the same spot that Kyle Petty just hit the wall. That's the damage we see the three car. And they're going to have to start work on that to see if they can get it back into competition. We understand that Brett Bodine hit the back of the 33 car. That's the reason that the uh, oil cooler was damaged on that car. And there is Robert Presley in the pits here on the main straightaway. And they're working on the rear spoiler, trying to attach it, reattach it, I guess, where the 11 car hit it, Brett Bodine hit it. And now, from uh, Ken Schrader's car, let's see what we can see. We see Kyle get it tapped and slammed hard into the wall. Good indication of just how severe the contact was. There's Schrader riding it out. Here it is again. No question there. Jim Burton got into the left rear quarter panel with Kyle Petty and slammed into the wall. You see some other cars making some contact. And yep. boy, what a great job. Yeah, that was Presley, Ned, after he yeah. had been hit by Bodine. Yeah. And John Kernan is with Brett. Brett's crew is working underneath. You just see all the oil that is just shot back under all over the engine and on the hood. And Brett uh, couldn't slow down in time. Could you got to the back of the 33? Yeah, they, you know, evidently they crashed up there in front of us, and uh, Robert checked up, and I just couldn't get stopped in time, and you know, I hit him hard enough and broke the fitting off the oil cooler. Uh, it's a shame that Lowe's uh, car was running off with good today. Finally, we got ourselves where we could be competitive, and uh, you know, it's just terrible. These restarts, you know, the fast cars are, are stuck in the outside lane. You know, I was running 10th, 12th, and I ended up starting 24th on a restart in the outside. It's just really hard to, to stay on the lead lap under those conditions. You put new tires on the lap down cars, and they can run awfully good down there in that inside lane. Well, that's Brett Bodine. This crew is working. What the, we're being told they're planning to do is bypassing the oil cooler, so they'll save some time. They won't actually replace the whole thing. They'll just bypass it and get it back out on the track as soon as they can. And the work also continues on the Kyle Petty car. The 75 of Todd Bodine is back into the race. He is 40 laps down in 32nd. And some fans of the young age are here enjoying this race at Bristol. Oh, me. Getting tired, Benny? All you folks out there scanning ESPN, this is pretty exciting, huh? Nobody's listening to me. Nobody's listening to us. I thought somebody would. Is anybody here in the grandstand, the front grand? Oh, that guy's listening to me right there in the white switch. No, Aren't you, he buddy? He's just looking up here to see. Aren't you listening to me? Yes. Yes, he ain't. Thank you. If you listen to me, wave. Bob, Bob, see, Bob. See, I told you he's listening Bob. to me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, really. Thank you, sir, very much. Where are you from? Tennessee, I bet. Yeah, I okay. see that. All right. 
Boo hiss on Tennessee. Jerry has Kyle, correct? Only kidding. Only kidding. <laughs> okay. How come you put up the four car and you got a three hat on? That's Jerry, correct? Thank you. You listening to me too, man? No, you ain't listening to me, huh? Yes. But it was just a racing accident. That's like Chris Hussey said. Hmm. <laughs> Chris Hussey said they're all going to be everybody be mad at everybody and leave here today. Who said that? Chris Hussey said everybody's <laughs> going to be mad at everybody. <laughs> that's a good point. You know, that's a why don't they start the fast cars on the inside? They should change that. Yeah, they've never done it. They have to do is push. Want to use starters on midgets? They do, and you sack. Mm -hmm. And two laps under green, and it is Rusty Wallace at the front of the field. Bobby Hamilton, make, yeah, Bobby Hamilton trying to get the lap back. Mark Martin runs in second, and Jeff Gordon is in third position. And Hamilton drives her to the bottom of the track, forcing Rusty Hyde gets the lap back, but Rusty hangs on to the lead as he got down in front of Mark Martin. Man, that old Bobby Hamilton going some playing that STP Pontiac. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, Puts 14 cars or 13 cars back in the lead lap. We were down to 12. Let's see if he can stand up there for 30, 40 laps. So we run 30, 40 laps on the green. John can update us on the 43 cars back on the lead lap. Bob, you remember earlier I told you about Ricky Rutschke bringing the sacrificial lamb to the track in old car because of how this place will eat up cars? Well, not the 43 team. Roddy Lewis said that is a brand new car built especially for Bristol. What they've done is they've strengthened the chassis with some X bars in, in the rear, some Y bars in the front. The problem here at Bristol, just the force, the sheer force, caused the firewalls to actually twist from the, and flex, and they would be out of shape when they get the car back to the shop. So as the race went on, the car would lose its setup. He said with his firmer chassis that they should be fine throughout the entire 500 laps. Well, Kyle Petty is behind the wall, and Dr. Jerry Punch is standing by with him. Making a good run by Pontiacs. Kyle, you had had a great one going, and I think I jinxed you, partner. I just said during the break that uh, we're going to watch Kyle because you got the car dialed in, and then boom, you're in trouble. What happened? When we started, we were a little tight. Then we took that out and we got tighter. It seemed like we took a rubber out. So finally we said slam it in the right rear and the car got pretty good. But on that restart, somebody got into the 37, the John Andretti going into turn three and I checked up and somebody got in the back of me. But hey, it's racing here at Bristol. There's nothing you can do. It's nobody's fault. It's just one of those deals. When something happens in front of you, and things happen so quick, like we talked about yesterday during that race, it's going to take out two or three people and it took out me this time. You had a suggestion that we go bass fishing at Darlington. Any thoughts about here? Yeah, this place ain't good enough for bass. They need to put carp in this place. <laughs> Kyle Petty able to smile after a tough day at Bristol, guys. <laughs> Kyle has his opinion of the racetrack. He sure does. He wastes no words either. <laughs> Ted Musgrave's car once again. He's in seventh position. Waltrip up ahead is in sixth. And Ken Schrader is right behind. But he is uh, four. Well, uh, one lap Ken's down right, in 16th yeah, yeah. position. You get it right against the ball. Just bear with me. You know, 295 from New 96, one. Oh, I ain't about to start doing that. Subtraction. Uh-oh, Mark taking a look on the inside of Rusty Wallace. I think that six car, that Babylon Ford is a rocket ship here this afternoon. It is fast. This is the 19th of the last 21 races that the number two car has led the short track. And Earnhardt's keeping up pretty well with that red car. Yeah, he is. Staying right with the leaders. And he's up to 27th position now. Let's see, he doesn't have fender, so that air is able to get to the first corner. Now, folks, I'm just kidding. I have no idea. <laughs> now, don't start that. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> we'll get into a performance test. Sterling Marlin has just gone. Oh, Rusty, did he hit the wall? 
came off the fourth corner, got the car sideways, and I thought maybe he brushed the wall, but evidently not. He's still going. You're going to give me heart failure. Well, gave me heart failure, too, and I thought I'd let share it with you. Well, let's take a look. Here he comes off the turn. Gets her sideways. No, he's not oh, close to the wall. Even close to the wall, BP. Oh, I just had to catch him out of the corner of my eye. Sorry. Less Bobby than 200 Hamilton. laps to go. Bobby Hamilton has just driven away yeah. from Rusty Wallace. Sure it has. He's the fastest car on the racetrack. I think that Mark Martin is probably faster than Rusty Wallace right now. But again, as we talked earlier, he might be two tenths of a second faster. But passing and catching is two different things here. Yep. Sterling Marlin is on the move. He's up now to eighth position and looking for seventh inside Ted Musgrave. There, Tim moves up just a little. Oh, makes the contact. He did those two cars as Ricky Rudd goes by and drops Musgrave another spot back. He's back to ninth now. Well, let's count them up. How many Fords we got in the top ten, Benny? We got first and second for Ford, then uh, fourth, fifth, eighth, ninth. That's it. Yep. Not bad for the Fords today. And the manufacturer's points battle. There you go. Four Chevys in the top ten, six Fords, no Pontiacs. Three Chevys in the 11 through 20, five Fords, two Pontiacs. And then 21 through 30 and 31 through 36. 10th and 11th here. That's Ricky Craven and Terry Labonte. And right on their back bumper is Robert Preston in the green car. Bill Weber has more on the Terry Labonte run this afternoon. He's in 11th looking for 10. And he was running closer to the front, but when they pitted under the last caution, Terry came in, took his four tires and fuel, went back out on the track. They discussed it. He had talked about his car being a little loose. They brought him back in, tightened up the car with two rounds of wedge, and that dropped him deep in the field. He's really fighting through traffic. He's faster than the cars in front of him, but this is a tough place to get by him. Well, he just disposed of Ricky Craven and uh, gave him a little nudge there when he did. It's almost impossible to pass here without giving someone a nudge. Robert Presley came along also and uh, dropped Craven back to 12th. So apparently that bump in the rear didn't hurt Presley that much. Doesn't seem to. Brett Bodine, you saw there at the bottom of your screen, going back out onto the racetrack, and now it becomes a battle for eight between Rudd and Musgrave. But you know the fans must love all this beating and banging and, and bumps because uh, they come, they turn out at Bristol in droves. Yes, they do. It's, what, 70,000 seats here now, and they have plans for a seating capacity of 100,000. There goes Musgrave taking the spot away from Rudd. As Just a was. second ago, we saw Sterling Marlin go to sixth position, dropping Daryl Walker back to seventh. That's what I was going to say. Oh, great minds work together, they say. Stole my line. <laughs> there we saw the new sweep down between three and four. They're building new roads here to accommodate the uh, 100,000 people. They hope to build grandstands all the way around. Look at Earnhardt. He stayed right on the back bumper of uh, Jeff Gordon, who's running third. Well, if, if the sheet metal is an aerodynamic advantage here, I mean, we're only talking about five hundredths of a second. And Earnhardt, yeah. you know, if he had the fastest car here, if he was a tenth of a second faster, he could lose the front end and still be faster if he, in fact, was the, fa was the fastest car, so. I think he approved he was the fastest car. Yeah. He had come from 24th position up to second before he had his wreck. And that was without the advantage of a call to the pit stop. Just simply had come up through there. For those of you just joining us, Earnhardt was involved in an accident very early in the race, doing extensive damage to the car in turn number four, spent about 20 laps in the pits, and now has worked his way back up to 28th position since coming back into the event. We see that he's once again standing right on the back bumper of the 24 car. 
first yeah. three cars Rusty Wallace Martin Martin and Jeff Gordon now, according to my stopwatch Rusty is not running quite as fast as Martin Martin was when he was leading the race it's about uh, two tenths of a second difference really but you know things have changed on the racetrack there's a little oil and grease uh-oh run up on the 18 car three abreast there for a moment and made it oh. man I'll tell you what that was some heads up driving by all those guys David Green including that that's the 18 car that was three of deep on the outside. There we go. There's David Green in the 18 and Mark thought he was going to have to pass him on the outside. He goes up to do that and Jeff looked on the inside and, and Jeff wisely backed off. He said hey this is going to be smart to do this not at this point of the race. So good heads up driving by all three drivers. Now we're going to go back and show you exactly what happened to Dale Earnhardt. There he is going by the Derek Coke car going down in turn three. He goes down and they just touch and Earnhardt goes around. He spins. Now he stands on the gas trying to make the thing do a 360 and the front comes around and smacks the wall and did some pretty heavy damage to the car. And he lost 20 laps behind the wall and he stayed 20 laps behind ever since he came back out. It is still Rusty Wallace in the lead. Mark Martin is running in second position and Jeff Gordon third with 323 of 500 laps completed at Bristol. DJ's got one of those cars that runs better the longer they run. Mm -hmm. Here's some. All right. What time we schedule off today? 4:30. Okay. Yes, sir. <clears throat> yep. Okay. Raymond Floyd is the. at Bristol and a sampling of what you're going to see later here on ESPN right after our coverage of this race at Shop Talk. Bill Elliott, the special guest, 430 slam dunk contest from Seattle with Brad Nessler and Dick Vitale at five. The tradition comes on at six o'clock Eastern. Raymond Floyd, the defending champion there. Then later we're going to have an edition of Sports Center followed by at 830 coverage of the America's Cup. And then the big shoe at 11 o'clock tonight with all the latest news from the world of sports on Sports Center. Is that the big show or the big, big show? Well, it's at least big. Uh -huh. Could be the big, big. Dick Trickles back in the race as we watch Wallace leading Martin. Mark's, Mark Martin says they had to put up with that kid all first 250 last time. We'll have to put up with Rusty Wallace, it looks like. <laughs> Wallace's average finish 2.15 in the last 20 races on short tracks. Yeah. Just a little more than second position. Well, there's Jeff Gordon in third. Jeff has uh, led a considerable amount of this race. He just, Jeff, Jeff's just sitting there riding, I believe. There's Jeff Bodine. He just by. He's in 14th a lap down. There is the fourth place car of Dale Jarrett. And Dale is having a good run in that car today. And really, overall, the season has been good for Dale as they're high up in the points. And the four car just passed John Andretti to take over that fifth spot. So Sterling Marlin started back, but he's marched into the front. And Andretti, the Kmart little season car, is now sixth place. Of how Sterling moved to the inside of John. Turn one. Andretti moves up. Andretti's and got a nice little donut there on the side of the car, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. The 12th, very 
you see Derek Cope is 15th a lap down. Meanwhile, Ted Musgrave, the 16th car, the family family car, seventh spot. Now well, he's called John and Brady. It's an auto light field summary. Tim Brewer has told John Andretti and ready to baby the right front tire. By the way, this is the only track under a mile that uh, Goodyear runs an inner liner, and it's on the right front. Yeah. Evidently, the car is pushing. They must be pushing a little bit, and uh, they're seeing some wear or something in the right front. And Brewer's telling Andretti, take it easy, take it easy, because uh, you know they're figuring there'll be another caution flag. They'll be able to change tires. And Definitely going to have to make one more pit stop before this race is over, whether it's under caution or green or whatever. And so he wants to take care of because if, if you abuse that tire, the more you abuse it, the worse the problem is going to get. So it just keeps heating up and keeps pushing more and more. So that's good advice that Ken Brewer is giving. Because the harder they drive in the corner, the, the hotter that right front set is. Ned says it, the hotter it gets, and the hotter the more air pressure that it builds up, and the harder the tire becomes. The more the car pushes, it's just a catch-22 situation. Just cycle. The eight car, Jeff Burton, came into the pits. I thought he was going to come in for a routine pit stop, but instead has gone behind the wall. Jeff Burton behind the wall. They have the hood up on the car and working on it, Bob, so they'll try to get him back out as we watch this battle here for the sixth position. There's, there's the best of sport. Yep. And there's Peter Jones. Looked like staying on the wall. The truck driver, the winning truck driver from down in Atlanta, the Mayflower Challenge. With the five car, Terry Labonte, he's the eighth place car. Daryl Walter is ninth, and Robert Presley is tenth. Or who's ninth? Daryl still is. <laughs> Good run for Presley, though. We haven't uh, talked about him very much, but he has stayed on the lead lap and in the top ten. As Leo Jackson, the owner of the 33 car, stole car last night, how Robert was doing. He said, man, he's really running good, but he's probably got a wreck here four or five times before he gets to learn patience here. So, but Robert's doing great today. And dropping back to Ricky Craven, who is in 11th position. He and Randy LaJoy locked up in a great battle for Rookie of the Year on Oh, and that's ready. Spins and Musgrave spins. And let's see. Oh, and the 41 car runs over the back of the 21. He got up in the air. And Jeff Bodine is trying to get a lap back. He's trying to race Rusty Wallace back. He saw all of that. But the 18 car is going to get in his way, and he's not going to be able to do it. And here comes the 23, oh, and, and, the seven, Mac, and the 7 crashes. Bodine into the wall on the front stretch. Grazes it. What they were doing, trying to get a lap back, racing back to the flag. And, and Spencer was trying to do the same thing, got in front of Jeff Bodine or got in his way as they both had a head of steam coming down through there. I tell you what, if we've got a replay on that, that 41 car looked like a daredevil back there going up in the air. And we see the left front tire is flat. It's knocked the air out of that left front on the Exide battery car. Well, let's take a look. Here we go. The 1637 get together. And both those cars spin because, see, the 16 gets hit by the 12. Let's see. Labonte's able to go through. Here comes the 33. He gets hit by Schrader. Schrader. The 21 slows down. Watch the 41. Whoa. Man, man. I did not see that. Way up All up, up over the top Shepherd. of Morgan Shepard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Here's Rusty Wallace, the leader. John Kernan there. Four tire change for Rusty Wallace. All four tires are on Rusty. Looks like he may win the race out of the pits again as Mark Martin. Jeff Burton still on the Jackson. Yes, Rusty wins the race out of the pits. Another excellent stop for this crew. Let's go to the back pits now and Bill Weber. Dale Jarrett and Terry Labonte are back here. Terry Labonte went too far and had to be pushed back over the line. Four tires and fuel for these cars back here. Watching for the leaders go by. Rusty goes by. Working on the left rear of the half of the floor. It's down and away, 21.3, still working on the Kellogg Chevrolet, having trouble getting the left rear tire on. He's too close to the wall, they're having trouble jacking it up. Now Terry Labonte is down, and once again, he'll have to fight his way through the field. They dropped the air pressure on the left side, 
tires of the Haviland Ford by one pound. And over here on the front stretch is John Andretti. John? Looks like damage on the right front as they try to pull the sheet metal away. They're changing right side tires now and trying to pull the sheet metal away, telling John to go on, go come back around, then they'll change the left side tires. But you guys out on the outside of the track might be able to get better, a better look. But John has told Tim Brewer's crew chief he doesn't think there's any damage other than sheet metal damage. But there sure is on the 21 car. I think you're right. I don't think there's any serious damage on the 37. But Morgan Shepard had a car almost in the cockpit with him. Yeah, and Morgan had got through the wreck, basically. He was going to be okay until Craven came along. <laughs> this yeah. ought to be good. And let's listen. Wow. You can see the whole Did you see that 41 car? Radio still works because we heard the spotter saying, "Go high, go high," and he was going to be okay. He was going to be okay shot. up there if he hadn't uh, hadn't got hit in the rear. 37 gets a little high. Musgrave thought about going under, and the 12 car touches the 16. Then both those cars spin, and it starts from there. Musgrave really getting more damage than Andretti in that particular uh, portion of the crash. But we got a lot of angles of this, and we'll take a look at it from. A robotic camera on turn two. Now watch Craven come along here and right up on the side of Shepard. From the blimp. Same thing, those two cars get together. Andretti and Musgrave, and then Musgrave gets hit by Derek Cope, and then they start jamming up behind. There goes Ricky Craven up on the left rear of Morgan Shepard. And, and he it, also went up on the 25. He landed right? on the 25, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Now, here's what happened to uh, uh, Jeff Bodine. Trying to get a lap back. And Spencer had ducked down to the inside. The 18 car was run along low on the groove, which he was supposed to, but they just simply ran out of room. There was nowhere else to go. They all trying to get to the same place at the same time, and they wrecked. No as a matter of fact, the 23 track. car did get a lap back. Spencer did. Here comes Spencer. He and Bodine get together, but Spencer beats Rusty Wallace and Bodine into the wall with that left front. Hmm. Now, once again, Morgan Shepard's in car slow mo. Imagine what Schrader said. Now, what, what, what was that? Okay, well, let's let's take a look from Schrader's car. He'll be behind him, of course. He hits Robert Preston. Morgan hits Schrader. Now from Ted Musgrave. Get a very good shot, though, of uh, Craven going up on the, the Shepard and uh, Schrader cars. They're just on the Panhard bar, trying to run it down. Well, John Andretti is back out there. However, Ted Musgrave is still in for adjustments on the Family Channel car. We'll be right back. Try to get a lap back. Yeah, he sure is. <sighs> Probably going to do so. It's a good idea.
They're, they're, they're still showing him two. Well, it might have been three, but I don't know how many of the things are so. I just looked up the two. <laughs> yeah, man. Right. Well, that's American Yeah, that's right. What's that? They're that's on the straight, back. Straight as well. Rusty Wallace still leads the Food City 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race from Bristol International Raceway in Tennessee. Mark Martin running second, and Jeff Gordon is third, with Dale Jarrett fourth, and uh, Sterling Marlin in fifth spot. And of course, Dale Earnhardt, who's right behind the leader, was unable to get a lap back when we went green. And Jerry is with Ricky Craven. Ricky's a wild ride after what happened. No, we tried to stop when they piled up here in two. Must get a break line. And then, uh, you know, we're going to two minutes. And I was hoping I wasn't going to have to talk to you until the end of the race. But uh, it wasn't to be. I was happy for everyone. We're so hard on the Kodiak Chevrolet. And I wanted to give my wife a, a good birthday present. It's her birthday today. And that didn't work out. But uh, say hi to everybody back in the week. If you're having trouble hearing Clay, but what he was telling you was he had a broken brake line and he couldn't get the car stopped. Now Earnhardt does get the lap back, and Rusty loses the lead to Mark Martin. And Mark Martin takes the lead, and here comes Gordon to take over second spot, and he does it. Now Earnhardt is only 19 laps down. And Mark don't care if he th makes up a lap. <laughs> He'll let him make up a lap. Because he gave him the opening he needed. Gave him the opening he needed to take the lead. Second and Rusty back to third. Okay, here we go with Robert Presley and Bobby Hamilton. And Hamilton is still on the lead lap in ninth position. Presley, however, is in 14th a lap down. So Hamilton is the last car now in the lead lap. And Bobby Hamilton actually led a lap. During that caution, he stayed out there. He was the last car on the lead lap, so it uh, worked great for him to stay out there and lead lap and get five bonus points. There's Mark. Well, Earnhardt's losing the lap again to Mark. Mm. That's the same. You do that. <laughs> Martin, the pole sitter here this afternoon. The winner has come from the pole 17 times in 68 races at this facility. You see the 28 car, Dale Jarrett, the Texaco car, passed Sterling Marlin a couple of laps ago, or four or five laps ago to take over that four spot. There's Marlin, the four car, the Kodak Film Chevrolet in fifth, and there's 17, Darrell Walter. Looks like his car is handling just a little bit better in sixth spot, and Rudd in seventh. Four car battle here. Martin checked out after he got around Earnhardt. Bill Elliott, by the way, only a lap down in the 11. McDonald's Ford. And that's Steve Grissom right behind Bill. Now save his two laps down. Yeah. 17. There are five cars. Six cars that are one lap down. Nine cars in the lead lap, and then 10th through 15th are one lap down. You we'll see their leader, Mark Martin. That's Kenny Schrader, the Budweiser Chevrolet on the inside and look at the damage that he has to the rear of that car with a 41 land on top of him then now boy that's an aerodynamic disadvantage can you imagine the, the downforce that he has back there now or maybe the lack of the lack of the lack thing. that's right yeah because the air is just not hitting the sport yeah. now yeah. <laughs> when schrader and earnhardt get side by side you wonder which one of them is damaged the worst i think earnhardt yeah, but his car will run faster right now than Schrader's will. Yeah. Here comes Jared and Marlin to the high side of Schrader. Well, we can see the Schrader's car is really slow from his damage. Jeff Bodine back on the racetrack. Darrell Walter oh. makes a little contact with Schrader as he goes by. A little white smoke, a little puff of white smoke. Not 
not too far uh, off of the what? Second turn is a um, well, it's a junkyard, is what it is. <laughs> salvage yard. Yeah. Okay. All right. Car salvage yard. Yeah. yeah. Some politically correct terminology here. Anyway, uh, all the restaurants, all the restaurants around Charlotte love this kind of race because they get all kinds of sheet metal to hang up in the restaurant. <laughs> Hey, here, here's some downforce. This is, of course, looking out the back of Schrader's car. Man, that's the nasty. The air doesn't know where to go there, does it? That is really nasty. Forty-three, Bobby Hamilton passed Terry Labonte, took over that eighth spot. What a great run from Bobby Hamilton, and Bill Weber has a report on Terry Labonte. Well, Terry went back out, complained the car is very loose. He's starting to drift very high in three and four. And for the first time today on the track, he's starting to go backwards. He's radioed his crew. He believes one of his rear jack bolts is backing itself out. So every time they crank wedge into it, it's cranking itself back out as he makes laps here at Bristol. I will uh, continue to watch that situation. But back up front, it is Mark Martin with a sizable lead now on Jeff Gordon. How much is it? Well, let's check out an AutoZone on-track interval. Now, from laps 373 to 377, it went from a half second to a 1.1 second interval between Martin and Gordon. There's the interval that we see. A second and a half on Jeff Gordon. front of 70,000 plus spectators here at Bristol. It is Mark Martin and Ford leading this Food City 500. Three of the top five are Fords. They're running first, third, and fourth at the moment with just a little more than 100 laps to go. And the Chevrolet's running second and fifth. And the Pontiac of Bobby Hamilton as fast as any of those cars, I think, if he could get in the right situation. Yep, he is in eighth, of course. Mark Martin won the fall race here at Bristol in 1993, looking for his first victory in the spring race at Bristol. Is Jeff getting closer? It's the traffic that Mark's running across. Is that what the problem is? Uh, I believe it's the traffic. Okay. <clears throat> Boy, we're going to be. Uh... All right. Allied MGD and Goodyear. Right? Whoops. Debris. Monsieur Debris. He's ready in the pits. ready in the pits. Oh. Hmm. Man, they need to rip the front end of it off. Yeah. I need to do another interval on that 24 and uh, three, uh, six, uh, Neil. Just, uh, looks like he's gaining. It's 24. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Food City 500 from Bristol, Tennessee, being brought to you by Allied Signals Fram Filters. You can pay a little now or a lot later. By Cold Filtered Miller Genuine Draft, making the world a very cool place. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. Here are the top 15 now as we show you an auto light field summary. Nine cars on the lead lap. And we'll show you the rest of the field in just a moment. John Andretti, by the way, just black flagged. They came in and they tore the front end off the car and sent him back out there. 
You had the front bumper. Yep. Air dam was loose on it, waving in the breeze, and so he had to come in and get it taken off. So that cost John, uh, he's now about five laps down. NASCAR has uh, told the Kenny Schrader team that he's slow enough that they would like for him to stay high and leave these guys the front runners the preferred line. Normally the slower cars go to the inside, but the, in the inside here is such the preferred line. Here's Jeff Gordon coming up on the back bumper of uh, Morgan Shepard. Shepard is between, or was between, Mark Martin and Gordon. Shepard is being shown three laps down. 18th position. Bobby Hamilton up to eighth. Ricky Rudd is seventh place to tie Ford, and right now Bobby Hamilton is 1.8 seconds behind Rudd. We'll keep a track on that and see if Hamilton is gaining. We'll see what 1.8 seconds is. Uh, about a straight that much, yeah. Almost a straight away. They're about a half a lap behind the leader. Now, folks, I mean, I realize that you think I'm just pumping the show up and what have you, but trust me, the 24 car is gaining on the 6. Yes, that 1.8 second interval that we saw a little while ago is, is no longer. Yes, it's it's nothing there right now. This Jeff has been caught up in some traffic. I mean, uh, Mark has been caught up in some traffic. John has ready to be in that traffic, but meanwhile, Jeff Gordon is closed up right on the back bumper. Two wins already for Jeff Gordon. the lead. Yeah, he's got the lead. Something's wrong with Mark. Gordon sure. goes back into the lead. Mark has led 155 laps so far, and as soon as our computers pick over, we'll tell you how many Jeff Gordon has led as he now adds to his total, being back at the front. He's led 107 laps. It's a 1.2 second separation between Rudd and Hamilton for seventh position as Bobby goes to the inside of Ward Burton. And Jerry, what is the story on Mark Martin? I just spoke with Steve Bill, guys, and he says that the problem is not with us, it's with the 24 cars, that our laps are consistent. But the 24 car has gotten quicker and quicker each time by, and so he passes and we haven't slowed down. He is speeding up. That's pretty impressive, Ned. It really is. Maybe he's just been sitting there not dominating this race like they've dominated the other races so that there wouldn't be all the heat on the Monte Carlo. I guess that's uh, part of his strategy. So when the time comes to go, they can go. They can go. We can see that Rusty Wallace has just about caught Mark Martin. Rusty, of course, is third. As Jeff Bodine between the two cars. Goes up and Rusty Wallace goes underneath. And meanwhile, Dale Earnhardt is keeping up with Rusty Wallace. There's Darrell Walter, the 17 car. He's currently six. Ricky Rudd is seventh, so that means that Bobby Hamilton is gaining on both sixth and seventh. Yeah, it's just a little over a half second now between Rudd and Hamilton. Bodine's woundy car there. Now it's just a matter of car lengths between Hamilton and Rudd. And he's no longer a half a lap behind. I said a little bit ago he's half a lap behind. He's not quite a half a lap now, so he's uh, even gaining on the leader. And probably not getting the advantage of the traffic that the leader would be getting. The guys are probably not getting out of his way as quickly as they would Jeff Gordon's or Mark Martin. The leaders uh, are still in traffic. Here is There's, that traffic. Yeah, Jeff's trying to, uh, well, he goes to the bottom side of Davy Jones and now Lake Speed going into turn number three. Well, he makes that pass easily. Here comes Martin, who has Michael Walker right on his back. Michael is 10 laps down in 23rd spot. Jeff Gordon looking for his fifth 
NASCAR Winston Cup victory but this if he should win today would be his first on a short track and his third this year that's right in only six races wow. there's no doubt that the 24 car has been the dominant car of the early part of the NASCAR Winston Cup season yep no doubt if really if he had had luck his way he could have conceivably won every event this year he has led every event there's Dale Jarrett running fourth. He's staying about the same distance behind Rusty Wallace. Meanwhile, pulled away from the four car. And here come Marlin and Walter. I'll tell you what. The jam up behind them. Musgrave, he's in the race for fifth spot right now. I mean, Musgrave. Watching these guys go down in turn three. That's Kenny Schrader. He had the misfortune of car landing on top of it. How many times can you say that? Yeah, really. <laughs> now from first to fifth, it is a 7.3 second interval, but first to second, only 1.2. That 7.3 is not quite a half a lap, but not far too a half a lap. Here goes Hamilton on the inside, just blows right by Ricky Rudd. Hamilton has a great run going for Richard Petty and Pontiac here today. There's Daryl Waldrop in sixth position, a 12-time winner, and that's the next car that Bobby Hamilton has his eyes on. Back with more live coverage of the Blue City 500 from Bristol, Tennessee, where Jeff Gordon is the leader. Man, that Gordon's unbelievable. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, okay. Ugh, do I have to lead to it? Okay, do I have to lead to this? You're coming right out of it. What do they do about a car that doesn't meet weight, Ned? These cars like Earnhardt that couldn't. That I think what's they, this track fact on now? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but getting okay. If cars overweight, what do they do to get rid of it? Oh, okay. Okay. NASCAR dropped the weight 100 pounds, okay. so these guys are trying gotcha. to knock gotcha. 100 pounds. Oh, I, okay. I understand. Just the billboard. Okay. I, th I think they should take that into consideration, Benny. Okay. And uh, normally yeah. those cars are not late anyway because they're finishing so yeah. far back. Yeah. are brought to you by Quaker State, the intelligent oil for longer engine life. In 1995, the weight was reduced on these Winston Cup cars by 100 pounds. We all know how tough losing weight is. How'd you like to lose 100 pounds? Well, they've got to do it one ounce at a time. We see where the oil filter goes. See the boss where it sits? They cut that away on the blocks because it's not needed because they run a remote oil filter to get it away from debris. You can see where it's been, the block has been cut away. Also, other pieces that are used for machining this block, it's not needed once the block is machined. All that is cut away, trying to save the few ounces they possibly can. We can see where all the machining was done on this block. One other area, this is a steel fitting that a water line goes to much heavier than say an aluminum fitting so why wouldn't they use aluminum watch as we weigh this this steel fitting weighs 0. 0.1275 kilograms watch as we weigh an aluminum fitting 0. 0.0460 why not use a lighter fitting because if that baby breaks all the water goes under the wheels of the race car and you stand a chance of ruining a hundred thousand dollar race car sometimes you just can't take a chance even for weight 
Uh, may I suggest another way to trim weight, Benny? Just take the whole front. Off. <laughs> <laughs> Men and I were talking about that during the commercial break, and they don't they don't weigh these cars. So the fact that Earnhardt has lost what probably 10 pounds of weight is not really a critical thing, is it? No, it won't uh, won't disqualify him because uh, NASCAR would take that into consideration. Say if he should finish up in the top 10 or something like that with it, well, they probably would weigh it, but they also would take it into consideration the weight that he lost. That Dale Earnhardt has battled back to now run 26th position. He is still 20 laps down. He has not gained a lap since he came back out on the race. No, but he has not lost one either. Right. Uh, but talking about that weight situation, I'll bet what we see missing from his race car wouldn't weigh, what, 15 pounds at the most? I said 10. It'd yeah. probably be 10 yeah. or 15 yeah. 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 Here's Daryl Waltrip in sixth position. Just ahead is Sterling Marlin. And look what's sneaking up yeah. there, that 43 Bobby, car. Bobby Hamilton is lurking. He's seventh place right now. Ricky Rudd is still continuing to follow Hamilton. He's eighth. Those are the only cars on the lead lap. Ninth place, Terry Labonte, a lap down. 29th car, Steve Grissom, yesterday's winner of the Goody's 250 Bush Grand National Race. And that's Chuck Bound that they're going around to the high side of the racetrack. The pole sitter here last year. Steve Grissom is a couple laps down. He was involved in that crash with Dick Triple. By the way, Bobby Hamilton's best career finish came in 1991, a sixth. So he is what? Within one position of uh, equaling that at the moment. The highest running rookie is Robert Presley, who is slapped down in 11th position. And as you can see, Presley is currently third in NASCAR Winston Cup rookie points. Randy LaJoy and Ricky Craven first and second. Now here comes Mark Martin up to put another lap on him. And Ricky Rudd was able to get back by Bobby Hamilton. Hamilton ran across the 29 car. Rudd saw the advantage, jumped on the inside, took the spot away. Well, there's been some traffic in there that's just been atrocious for a number of cars. Here's how Rudd passed Hamilton. Well, Bobby went high following Steve Grissom, and that opened the door for Rudd down on the inside, and he took advantage of it. We see Rudd. Also, we see Darrell Walter trying to chase down the four car. Now Walter, yeah, that's caught in this early. Good spot. They've been in some heavy traffic. Rusty Wallace and Dale Jarrett went through it. Uh, Jarrett's still back there in a lot of it. And as a result, uh, Sterling Marlin almost caught Jarrett at one time. He was uh, over a straightaway ahead of him that got caught up in that traffic. And boy, it don't take long. Uh, Jimmy Spencer's between the two cars, but Darrell gets alongside Spencer. You know, if you're wondering about Jeff Gordon, the leader of the race, yeah, he's still leading. How close is Mark Martin? Not very Man. close. <laughs> But Dr. Jerry Punch has a report on Jeff Gordon. Guys, a moment ago, the facial expressions of the DuPont crew went from smiles to frowns because Jeff Gordon radioed Ray Abraham and said, hey, the car has started to miss. It's sputtering and missing. And they said, nope, no, it's coming back. It's coming back. And then he called back and said, no, it's missing again. Now, now it's coming back. And apparently it has come back and has not missed now for the last three or four laps, but they are holding their breath here in the DuPont pit. Well, they've got 56 more laps to hold it, and uh, I'm not sure they can live that long. <laughs> No. But his lap speeds are still pretty good. He's uh, he's still turning laps as fast or faster than anyone out there. And he has a pretty good lead. In fact, he has a four-second lead, just a fraction over four seconds over Mark Martin. Boy, Jeff has a tremendous advantage when it comes to bonus points awarded this year. He has 40 bonus points accumulated. Dale Earnhardt second on that list with 25. Of course, you get bonus points for leading a race and leading the most. Now, yeah, here's uh, Waltrip. Well, actually, Marlon Waltrip, Rudd, and Hamilton. All running right together on the racetrack beneath Lake Speed. Fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. As far as up front, it is a four-second interval. 
tussle between Jeff Gordon and Mark Martin. What's the matter? You think they have word for it? Well, they're telling me this is a Okay. Ned, Ned is, I must admit, though, as, as many years as he's been doing the stopwatches, almost an expert. Okay. He's probably more official than the official. <laughs> And Schrader brings the button machine in. Less than 50 laps to go. They click off pretty fast when they're under green. And this really has been a relatively fast race. We have had seven caution periods for 65 laps. The average speed of the race is 90.204. And Jeff Gordon's last lap was 109.1. Okay. This guy's about to catch Dale, huh, Ned? Yeah, yeah, his car is really slowed down. So pretty soon we're going to have fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth. Yeah. He's off about three tenths of a second of what he had been running. Mm. I guess NASCAR's asked all the slow cars to run on top, huh? Yes. Yep. Yep. Uh huh. That's right. We're gonna have a. We're gonna have a lot to feel. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Bill with what? All right. Okay. Well, since it started its national tour in September of 92, the Family Channel blimp has delighted thousands of spectators with aerials over uh, fairs and festivals and sporting events in more than 90 cities, 35 states. There it is, the Family Channel blimp providing the overhead shots for us today. Here at Bristol, well, Dale Jarrett has fallen to sixth position, and uh, look at this. Yeah, his last speed dropped about three tenths of a second, Bob, from what they were running earlier. What's the problem, Bill? Ned Dale just can't get off the corner anymore. They've been working on this all weekend, and uh, now he's just radioed back to his crew that he's having trouble in the turns, and he just can't get off the corner. They're happy with their run to this point. It's going to be a disappointing finish for him. Davey Adelson won from the back stretch here the first race in 1990, and they were hoping to pull off another one today. What are they doing, Bill? Spinning the tires off the corner? They're loose off the corner? That's the problem they had last night in final practice, Benny. They were working on that. The change they made on the headers this morning they were hoping would take care of that, and they believe it has up until this point. But it just now, uh, Dale just doesn't have it coming off the turn anymore. Let's go to Dr. Jerry Punch of the 24th day. Remember I told you a minute ago that Jeff Gordon had said the car was sputtering a little bit, missing, and it would catch back and run okay? Well, he hasn't commented about it missing anymore, but better safe than sorry. Ray Everham and the crew sent a crew member running back to the truck, and they brought back to the pit area 
a new carburetor just in case they might need it. Hopefully they want, but it's here if they need it, Bob. They've only got 33 laps to go, and this one will be history as Gordon continues to lead. It is interesting to note that when Dale Earnhardt won this race here last year, he took the points lead from Ernie Irvin. Right now, if points were awarded at this moment, Dale Earnhardt would not be in the points lead, but he would be five behind Sterling Marlin, who is running in fourth position, and Dale Earnhardt is 20, uh, make that 25th. So we could have a new points leader at the end of this event. And it's amazing how many laps they can run here in a short one. They can run almost or better than 40 laps in about 10 minutes, Benny, something like that. About 40 laps in 10 minutes. Right now we have 30 laps to go, and this race is going to be over in less than in less than 10 minutes if there's not a caution play. And Jeff Gordon, as you can see, is about to lap the 43 car of Bobby Hamilton running eight, but his separation back to second place his advantage over Mark Martin is almost four seconds. Yeah he's only lost about a tenth of a second in the last since the last time we clocked him which was about 20 or 25 laps ago so he's not really losing that much time. So he can't afford to sit behind. Oh Whoops. and what happened to Jeff as he came I, off the corner? I think he got a little bit I think he lost traction got a little bit sideways and backed off of him and said hey I don't need to be trying to be a hero here and straighten that thing out. He just backed off and let her straighten out and then come back at him again. And he was right on the back bumper of the 43 and all of a sudden car just slipped. Now the 43 is trying to get by this. You know that's a problem right now. The 43 car is trying to get by the 17. The 17 is trying to get by the 28. You know they're not as concerned about Jeff Ford as they are themselves. All right. They're going to try to hold their position. Because Bobby Hamilton, I guarantee, he doesn't care with who wins this race. <laughs> He'll get another position. Or two. That's right. Would be at Jeff Gordon or Mark Martin. Yeah, I think Dale's holding them up a little bit there just right now. This car, just as Bill Weber pointed out, just not getting traction when he's off the corner. He's got plenty of horsepower there. Darrell comes down on the inside. And the train will go by. Yep. Door is open. It is just about 4 o'clock Eastern time for those of you joining us. Welcome to the closing laps of the Food City 500. Only 24 to go. The leader is on the right side of your screen. That is Jeff Gordon, car number 24. In one half hour at 4.30, our Shop Talk presentation tonight or this afternoon will feature Bill Elliott, who is 14th, three laps down. Bobby Hamilton has moved into that seventh spot. Darrell off at the sixth. There we see the Autolite field summary. Now there's just eight cars in the lead lap. Now Dale Jerry is actually lapped down, so seven cars now in the lead lap. Yeah, seven cars. Now. It looks like Jeff Gordon is kind of content to follow these two cars. Ricky Rudd is reporting that his car is very loose. Marlon goes inside of Rick Mast. Here comes Rudd right behind. One yeah. laps to go for Jeff Gordon. Excuse me, Ned. Rick Mast is still out there. Now, Rick Mast is off to apparently to Ross Presley. Darrell Waltrip has caught Ricky Rudd. That Rudd, Rudd driving a loose car. Here goes Darrell on the inside. Takes that spot away. Is the 43 car going to be able to get it? He can't. So Darrell moves to fifth now. And you see Jeff Gordon. They're not out running Jeff Gordon right now. Jeff has just backed off and said, these guys are racing for position. I'm not going to get up there because right now Mark Martin is not gaining on me. I might be even gaining on, on Mark Martin, the second place car. So let these guys race. I'll ride to the end, which is only 17 laps from now. 17 laps to go. That is exactly the message that the crew is conveying to Jeff Gordon. Yeah, he's almost six seconds ahead now, so he is gaining on Mark Martin. So he does not need to take any chances whatsoever. Darrell Waltrip beginning to draw away from these two. If Waltrip can stay in fifth position, it'll be his 25th top five here at Bristol. It's a five 
1.6 second interval between Jeff Gordon and second place Mark Martin. Bobby Hamilton yeah. looking on the inside. He has that spot. Passes Ricky Rudd for sixth place. You say that would equal his yes. best uh -huh. ever finish yep. if he finishes there. But that's yeah. that fifth is on his mind because he walked right there with Darrell Walker before they got into all that traffic. Well, there is fifth right ahead of him, Sterling yeah. Marlin. Both coming up on a lot of traffic and just well, actually, Darrell has passed Sterling. He'll you know, take over yeah, fourth. That's right. He's in fourth position now. Marlin back to fifth. And Hamilton is closed up. Around, evidently, Sterling Marlin fighting a loose condition, push something. But now Ricky Rudd comes back on Hamilton. And they get jammed up with slower traffic. Him sixth and seventh. And Jimmy Spencer on the outside, the 23 car, letting those guys go. Hamilton trying, trying to get alongside. Takes a look on the inside of the four car. He's going to take this spot away for fifth. How about that? Bobby Hamilton goes to fifth position. He Great was a lap down at one time. Yep. Great run. Looking for his highest finish ever in NASCAR Winston Cup competition. And there goes Rudd also to the inside of Sterling Marlin and putting Marlin back to seventh. That means that Dale Earnhardt, if, he, if things go continue will still be leading the points when this thing is over. That is correct by nine. If points were awarded right now, Earnhardt would have a nine. And Mark Martin advantage. is slow. Mark oh. Martin is coming into the pits. He's got a flat tire. Wow. Mark giving up second position here with ten laps to go because of a flat tire. Oh, man. The right rear tire is flat on the six car. Man. Just a terrible break for Mark Martin, who started from the pole and ran up in the top two or three most of the race. It'll be a quick tire change on the right side, and Mark goes back out onto the racetrack, but he is a lap down. There is the leader, Jeff Gordon, eight laps to go. This is a guy that we have watched grow up on ESPN from Thursday night and Saturday night thunder. But if he wins this race today, it'll be his first victory on ESPN. Really? Right. That's right. Yeah. Huh. He's won a couple of races that we've been involved in on ABC, but he's never won an ESPN race. Well, actually, Mark Martin is two laps down now. He yep. lost another one. He, he lost a lap as he was coming into the pits and then changing the tire, lost another lap. Born in California, grew up in. Whoa, what is he doing way up there? What are you doing? Man, there's loose stuff up there, Jeff. Boy, <laughs> that'll get you in trouble in a hurry. Just five laps to go. I tell you what, Mark Martin had a tire go down. You know, could Jeff Gordon be having to say, oh, 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 oh. And nice he's saved <laughs> by Robert Presley. Oh, man. Man, oh, man. Dale Jarrett unlapping himself from Jeff Gordon. Now, whether Jeff just backed off that much, he probably has. There, Mark Martin getting one of his laps back. With Rusty, or rather, Mark Martin uh, in for a pit stop. That puts Rusty Wallace in second, and this man, Darrell Waltrip, in third, followed by Hamilton and Rudd. There is Mark Martin just ahead of the 24 car. Tough break has dropped him. Down to nine. Sterling Marlin is all over the track. I think he has a flat tire. He must have a flat tire. The right rear is flat. The right rear is flat on the four car. But there are only two more laps to go. And he'll ride it out. One would think that he would. Jeff, yeah, rather Ward all Burton. over the track. Yeah, Ward Burton had to slam on the brakes right behind him. But Jeff Gordon, you know that his tire is a it's white flag for Gordon. One more lap for Jeff. But anything can happen. The 12 car's up in front of him. I think he has a flat tire going into turn three, but he's up high on the racetrack. Here comes Jeff off the fourth corner. Is he going to win it? Yes, he will. Jeff Corton takes the checkered flag and wins his first career short track. And look at Darrell Waltrip lead Bobby Hamilton down, and Waltrip, by a car length, holds on for third. Here's John Kernan with Ray Everham and Ray. Were you worried at all? I mean, you saw Mark come in with a flat tire, Sterling apparently a flat tire. Yeah, we were we were really worried, you know, but um, like I always say, got to thank God first. And uh, 
Everybody else second. You know, Jeff drove a great race. These guys did a great job in the pits. Goodyear brought us an excellent tire. And, you know, I, I really thought that we were beat today, but we kept working on that thing. And um, that kid's an awesome driver. I really can't tell you. He's, he's really got this team pumped up. Well, you remember what Ray said last year, being with Jeff Gordon is like winning the lottery. <laughs> it's his third win of the season, fifth career win, first at Bristol in his fifth start, and yes, Chevy wins again. We'll be right back. for this little report. That's right. <laughs> Neil's got it all figured out. Oh, I, yeah, I'm ready for those. The young man who grew up in Indiana because that was one of the few states but allow a 13-year-old to drive a sprint car. Jeff Gordon has won for the third time this year in NASCAR Winston Cup competition. He is still in his car in victory lane, and in just a moment, he's going to be stepping out of the car. Here he is to the thunderous applause of the crowd. Hey. Here's Jerry Punch. And their hand slapping and congratulating down here in the in victory lane as Gordon gets up and yeah, he wants those folks to be able to see. Congratulations, uh, Jeff, on not standing up. Hey, this uh, this just took this team to a new level. Uh, you know, short tracks where we've always had our trouble. We've always had our problems here at Bristol, and uh, I'm just <laughs> I'm just happy all four fenders are left on this thing. That that was our goal. And, Man, we've had good cars here in the past, but uh, you know this, this is wonderful. I, I gotta gotta thank Dupont Automotive Fishes. They they've been great. Gotta thank Valvoline. The Goodyear tires were were excellent, and uh, gotta say hi, hey to Coca-Cola too. Thanks a lot. Gonna ask you with 100 laps to go. Mark was leading the race. You're running second, and suddenly you just zipped by and took off. Were you holding back and sort of saving the car? No, not at all. Uh, you know, I, my car just took a while to come in, and we never ran long enough green flag laps. My car was tight. It was tight. These guys kept loosening up, loosening up all day long. And all of a sudden, that last stop, they, they got it just right. It wasn't very good uh, on new tires. And them guys got out away from me. But all of a sudden, man, that thing just, I don't know what. <laughs> it's like it, it just hooked onto a rail and just took off. I mean, it was driving itself. My foot fell asleep. And uh, it was hurting so bad before I got by Mark. And then after I got by Mark, I didn't even know I had it asleep. And it's still hurting. A little race car medicine. Now, we heard you comment that the car may have had a miss or sputtered a little bit, and the guys in the pit started scrambling, looking for carburetors. And what was that? I have no idea. You know, I, I didn't know how far we could go on gas. I thought maybe we ran out of gas. Uh, I switched the, the ignition boxes, never never felt it again. Uh, you know, it's a scary, scary moment. But, you know, when it's your day, it's your day. Nobody's going to take it away from you. We might mention there was a good luck charm riding in the car, and Brooke Seeley, you... Brooks Ely Gordon, I should say, what was the good luck charm today? Well, last night we were we were real nervous about this race, and so I looked in the Bible and I found in Psalms a verse that said, "The Lord is my strength and my shield," and I wrote it in there. And Jeff, right before he went out, we we're like, "Where's the verse? We'd forgot to put it in there." And one of the team guys went back to the trailer and taped it in there. He wasn't going to go out, so it was in there. So it was in there the whole time. So saved by a verse from Psalms that it is on the dashboard inside the Dupont Chevrolet, and Jeff Gordon, his third victory. In six start, Bob. And he also once again leads the most laps, so he picks up 10 bonus points here at Bristol this afternoon. Shop talk coming up with Bill Elliott at 430. That was nice, Neil, letting Brooke yeah, do that. Yep, yeah, really was, Jerry. 
Heads up. Okay. Gotcha. We got 16 minutes of commercials. Make it quick. Hush. <laughs> you want to get paid? Here, get rid of this stuff. Get paid? Do you get Back paid? Back to Bristol in a minute. Huh. They don't know I wouldn't do it for nothing, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Who won the pool? Bob won the You have any preliminary points yet? <laughs> don't throw you back at oh me. My gosh. <laughs> I just really realized that. Yes. Gotcha. Thanks. <clears throat> hey. I'm don't not as rich as you guys. Every don't little make, bit. Don't take much for you. <laughs> Welcome back to Bristol. Standing with Rusty Wallace, a second place finish today. A good run for you. We were talking about downforce. It's been a popular topic, a factor again today. Yeah, I guess so. It looks like they got us again. But, hey, I'm real happy with the second place finish. The car ran good. And uh, uh, I led a lot of the race today and made a pit stop. And uh, I guess I got my air pressures off a little bit on one restart. I just couldn't get the car to go on restarts. But after I could run for a while, it was okay. But right there at the end of the race, I'm glad we're about out of time because I was getting awful loose out there. But it was a good race. I just want to thank all my sponsors, Miller, Fleetwood RVs, and uh, Mobile, and uh, Bosch, everybody. Everybody did a great job today, and all the crew did a good job. Motor ran perfect, but uh, that's racing. And I'm happy to get a second after the luck I've been through. I can make it a little happier. 16th to 9th in points, Rusty. Well, that's nothing wrong with that. It's just uh, uh, I sure appreciate that, and I just got to keep laying the numbers on the board now to try to get the points up there. Uh, last week at Darlington really hurting the points because we were really charging to the front, but uh, hey, that's racing, and we'll just keep on going. Rust Rusty, second here today. Coming back, John Curter will talk with Sterling Marlin, Jeff Gordon, the winner here at Bristol today. Okay, we're going to look at uh, Sterling's right rear tire to show you. And then Okay. Do, do I have time for two questions, or is this a, a quick deal? Okay. All right. Don't hurry back, Bob. And Sterling finished seventh. Hey, Harold. No, ninth, it says on the scoreboard. It says ninth. Pretty exciting stuff, man. Ninth through seventh. It says ninth on the scoreboard. I don't know. It's What's Sterling? Because I thought he finished seventh, but he finished ninth, you say? What is? He's got ninth on the scoreboard, so... It says that Terry Labonte was seventh, okay. Mark Martin was eighth. Okay. He finished seventh. Okay. okay. Now we hear ninth. <laughs> <laughs> ninth. How did Mark finish ahead of him when Mark pitted? Oh, well. I'm not going to mention it. <laughs> How much did I win? Plenty. <laughs> Kill Bob's mic. Welcome back to Bristol International Raceway, Bristol, Tennessee. And as we take a look at the right rear tire that came off of Sterling Marlin's Kodak Films Monte Carlo, you can see we're, uh, well, down to the cords. That is really down to the cords. Sterling, all the air came out, yet you stayed out there. How difficult was it to finish this race on that flat tire? It's pretty rough. I tell you, it was really, uh, you know, the back ends wanting to get around on the car, and it got car got real loose about the last 20 laps, and uh, we just wore it out and uh, wore it all the way through the cords and uh, blew it out. So uh, we're just trying to hang on finish. Uh, I believe we'd run third if... You know, had nothing happen, but, uh, you know, the Kodak team done a good job and uh, we finished, survived this place, all defenders on the car. <laughs> now, if you would have finished third, I believe you would have taken over the points lead. Um, you're in, within striking distance right now. Is this team ready to be consistent the rest of this year and challenge for the title? Well, it, you know, the team's been real consistent all year, and uh, every race we had a top five car and uh, had a little something like this, knock us back to seventh or ninth where we finished, but, uh, uh, you know, every week we go out, we feel like we've got a top five car and uh, we win races and 
uh, Oakland just keep bearing down and uh, you know try to knock Earnhardt out of the championship, but uh, he's tough. He'll be hard to beat. All right, that's Sterling Marlin. When we come back to the Bristol International Raceway, Dr. Jerry Punch will visit with Darrell Waltrip and Bobby Hamilton. Just so. think, Dick, you came all the way back here for this, huh? These guys, I'll get, I'll get in the middle here so we can. You know, Neil, how much time back? Well, you should let me and Ned go on. I mean, you're, you're letting all this traffic get out in front of me and Ned. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Good point, Bishop. You guys are driving back. I'm trying to catch a plane. <laughs> ESPN Speed World being brought to you from Bristol by the more than 1,000 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts by Quaker State, the intelligent oil for longer engine life. And by Allied Signals Autolite spark plugs, guaranteed for two years, no matter how far you go. As promised, here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Thank you very much, Bob. I caught up with the third and fourth place finishers first. We're going to talk with DW, who finished third, and DW, 12 wins at this old tough, tough racetrack, but today a third place finish, almost as good as a victory. Yeah, well, I was uh, want to say hi to everybody at home and thank Western Auto and and uh, thank the good Lord for a safe day. Get that behind us because I had a great day. I had a lot of fun. I uh, was racing hard, but I got to tell my crew, the next time there's 50 laps to go, they got to tell me there's 20 laps to go, and maybe I can catch the guy in front of me. Wait, we just fooled around there a little bit long, almost got lapped, and then I checked out and uh, had a good finish. I'm real proud. Folks saw this guy at 7 o'clock in the morning this past Tuesday pedaling away in the exercise room, getting ready for Bristol, and it paid off today in great shape here. He finishes third. How about finishing fourth? This guy, what a great run from a lap down. Bobby Hamilton, your career best. Congratulations. It was, Jerry, and the guy's really done a heck of a job on the car. Man, that thing hooked up all day. It was just, I was, you know, the finish was good for me, but I was really proud for these guys. They build real good-looking race cars. And it, they just deserved it. STP deserved it. I got to race my old hometown buddy, Daryl, there at the end. I said, home time's at Nashville. I thought we was in Nashville again. But we just had a good time out there. We just needed real long greens once we got our drag position back. And if we had, I think we'd have been a second or third place car, maybe even a first place car. Well, we have two guys that have reason to smile, finishing third and fourth as Bobby Hamilton gets his best career finish. We'll be back and take a, have a chat with the highest finishing rookie, Robert Presley, after this. Stay with us. Okay. Oh, Whoops, excuse me. I'm really. I'm really sad that old Daryl didn't mention me working on that car. Hmm. Yeah. Oh my gosh, car. what was he Thank talking Thank everybody about? else. I'm crushed. <sighs> yes. Wait last see. Okay. Okay. Wait till I see. <laughs> Go over and bust right. my butt working on that ride. <laughs> no, we don't either. I got a little bitty foot. Where's the big hat around here, though? I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, thanks. Or the big pants, whichever it is. There I'm you go. Sure. There you go. I knew you'd get it. <laughs> well, Bristol was um, kind of normal. Wasn't very normal that first hundred laps, but it got mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still, it kind of got like it always is. You say we got another break there, Neil? <clears throat> Jeff Gordon has won here at Bristol. Coming up in just a few minutes at 4.30 Eastern, Shop Talk Slam Dunk Contest at 5. The tradition final round coverage live at 6 o'clock Eastern time. Then Sports Center at 7.30. The big America, America's Cup race at 8.30 Eastern time tonight. And then the big show at 11 o'clock. Sports Center wraps it all up. For the first time this year, the highest finishing rookie is Robert Presley. Here's Bill Weber. And a top 10 finish, 10th place for Robert Presley. Congratulations. Just an average day for you, huh? Yeah, it was a good day, though. You know, I uh, really got taught a lesson about this racetrack, you know, how tough it is. And, you know, I had a good car, Leo, Charlie, all the boys at the shop done good. Motor run great. And they said, just sit out there, keep your head, you know, on right. You come out of here with a good finish. You know, it looked bad at the start, but looked up one time we was running fifth or sixth, you know, and I said, you know, man knows what he's talking about, so. Really happy, you know, just to be able to finish the race now. That's the first one you have finished this year, correct? Well, first one we ain't took an intermission during the middle, you know, to fix something that we've messed up. But, you know, I'm really happy for all these guys. They've worked hard all year, and, you know, now maybe we can start repaying them back. Robert Presley, 10th today to the doctor. And Ricky Rudd, what a great run you had uh, finishing in fifth in the Tide Ford. Uh, looks like the tires were going away toward the end. Well, Jerry, we had a little race going. I guess uh, Sterling, myself, Daryl, and then uh, Bobby Hamilton drove a great race today. And we just got all racing each other, and it was who could save their tires the most. And I thought I'd gauge mine just right when it was time to make the move. And and I, and I ran, got inside of Daryl, got inside the 43 car, and was coming on and had Sterling lined up. And then just like he flipped the switch, the tires went away. But uh, I was running them pretty hard. So they usually, you know, you expect the car to go away if you run that right rear tire that hard. And that's what happened. So at the very end, we were just trying to, you know, just trying to keep them to make an unscheduled stop. Got to be thankful to just be able to walk away from this place with the race car intact. Well, I'm just, you know, I'm just real proud of everybody. You know, everybody drove a great race today. They used their heads. It was a give and take. It's a, you know, it's a treacherous track. It's a one groove racetrack. You get out of the groove, you go to the back, and and uh, guys work together all day. You know, and everyone come out of here. Most everybody came out here with a race car in one piece. Ricky able to smile with a good top five finish. We'll be back with more from Bristol International Raceway, including a look at the complete rundown for the Food City 500 after this. I didn't mention that. I'm sure we have to get permission to do that. Hmm? The NMPA. They're selling tires. <clears throat> Who's with Dale? Who's with Dale? Yeah. Point, thank you. Right. What's that race call next week? First Union. First Union. First Onion. Dale's still hanging in there, Ned. He's being very mm -hmm. consistent this year. He gained two points positions today. Yeah. Up to seven. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Boy, he gained four.
Welcome back to Bristol International Raceway. The teams are packing up, getting ready to leave and make the trek back home. Then they'll be at North Wilkesboro next week. I've got the sixth place finisher, Dale Jarrett. And Dale, I believe with the finish, you move up two positions in the points. And you did this from the back stretch today. Yeah, I'm going to have to learn how to qualify and uh, get us over on the front stretch. But uh, the guys did a really, really good job in the pits all day long. Had a good race car. I think in that first segment uh, before we ever had a caution, we went from 19th up to about 6th. And so you, know, you have to have a good race car to be able to do that. Just a little bit tight in the center there at the end, and, and I kind of abused the right front tire, and, and that hurt us late in the race. Well, that's Dale Jarrett's thoughts. He uh, comes home with a sixth-place finish today. Congratulations. At Bristol International Raceway, the Food City 500 has been won by Jeff Gordon. And here is a full field rundown showing you where the entire field finished. By the way, Jeff Gordon led 204 of the 500 laps here today. The average speed of the race, almost 92 miles an hour. And for Jeff Gordon, as we indicated, it's his third victory in six events this year. And as you can see, a lot of drivers had uh, had trouble, finished uh, pretty far down the line, but they kept getting their cars fixed and getting back out there and making laps. Dale Earnhardt started when he had his accident. He was 36th in the field, back on the racetrack, lost one more lap and finished 25th, gained 11 spots for 33 points. And officially, only three cars were out of the race when the checkered flag dropped. Now, here are the points. The first three stay the same, although Sterling is only 17 behind Dale Earnhardt. Mark Martin still third. Jeff Gordon made the biggest, no, he made the second biggest jump. He jumped four positions from eighth to fourth. Terry Labonte stayed the same. Derek Cope lost two positions. Dale Jarrett gained two. Ted Musgrave lost two. Rusty Wallace was the big gainer today, up seven positions. And Ricky Rudd gained two positions to go into the top ten. And there are the other point standings. John Andretti was 10th going into this event. He drops to 14th. And there you can see 16 through 20 at the conclusion of six races in the Winston Cup season. And, boy, you can see, you know, all of these are in the 600 range from there up to about, what, 12th or something like that. So the points are very close back down the line. Next week, we will be at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina for the first Union 400. That is at 1 o'clock Eastern time next Sunday afternoon. Coming up next here on ESPN, Shop Talk featuring Bill Elliott. A chance to get some uh, inside information from Bill and to buy some of his merchandise. Well, it was in many ways a typical Bristol, but uh, in many ways it was kind of different. Well, it was typical from the standpoint of a lot of cars getting banged up, Bob. I want to say a quick word about Race Against Drugs that was held here. A special schooling was held. 500 students graduated this week, and a lot of the NASCAR drivers were there for graduation on Thursday night. And boy, we really, that was a fun deal to see all those kids uh, work against Race Against Drugs. Pretty amazing to me, Benny, that we ran well over 100 laps at the beginning without a caution. It was amazing. And I tell you what, Jeff Gordon proved today that the, he and that team are for real this year because they've run good at every venue we've been. Big track, intermediate, and now the short tracks. A little bit of consistency will make him a uh, championship contender, but you also, of course, have to look at Sterling Marlin, who continues to be consistent unlike last year. So he is very definitely a championship contender. We're only six races into the season, and we again will be at North Wilkesboro, North Carolina, next Sunday afternoon. Congratulations to Jeff Gordon on his third win of 1995 for Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, Bill Weber, John Kernan, and Dr. Jerry Punch. This is Bob Jenkins. Thanks for joining us for now. So long, everyone. Now, how are we doing these this week? Any differently? <clears throat> Rolling. The sixth race of the 1995 NASCAR Winston Cup Series brings us to the half mile at Bristol International Raceway in Northeast Tennessee. It's the Food City 500, and you're watching ESPN's highlighted coverage of the event. We now move ahead in our coverage.
From Bristol International Raceway in Tennessee, you're watching highlights of the Food City 500 NASCAR Winston Cup race on the 36-degree banking of this half-mile racetrack. We now move ahead in our coverage. We now move ahead in our cup. We now move ahead in our coverage of the Food City 500 from Bristol International Raceway in Tennessee, perhaps the most demanding racetrack on the circuit. 36 degrees of banking and speeds near 125 miles an hour. Okay, okay. You're watching highlights of the Food City 500 from Bristol International Raceway in Tennessee, perhaps the most demanding racetrack on the circuit, with 36 degrees of banking and speeds near 125 miles an hour. We'll be right back.